Yo, what's up, everybody? Billy Tucci here coming to you live with, of course, Tinkerbell, the art table. And uh, we have a fun show today. Welcome to our lunch bunch, our lunch break, if you will. Well, I am going to have from Meta Studios uh, our great friends, Mr. Paul Jenkins, the creator of Fairy Quest. And of, and of course, also from Meta Studios, Carrie Ann Hunt, our, our resident fairy, if you will, fairy queen. Uh, but real quick, I had to run downstairs real quick because I just got a delivery. And uh, if you guys don't mind, uh, uh, Paul and Carrie Ann, give me one second. Yeah. Your Cyblade She San Diego Comic Con editions came out. So they're all out. Let me go a little bit large on me real quick. We got that. They're all out. They just shipped. They were just delivered. Here's your books. Every one of them has a little Comic-Con 25th anniversary logo there. So there you go. Actually, what I should do is if I do this, I could share it here. And it'd be better if I, if I uh, add this one. Let's see. Hang on a minute. Is it on? Nope. Hang on. Sorry about that. Oh, I made myself large. There we go. But if I make this one large, there you go. So here's your books. Put the light on. Turn this off. And they look gorgeous. So here they all are. We got, uh, I don't know, how many? What, 200? 200 of them or so? How, however many we made, 250. And they're all, thank you guys for all getting them. They's gonna, we start packing them up tomorrow and Friday. And we're going to ship these bad boys out. But it came out beautiful. Mindy Lopkin, made, our designer, did this. Now Scala did all the logos and everything like that. And, uh, and my buddy uh, from uh, DA Printing printed it, and here it is. It just looks great. So proud of this book, so happy. So here's your side blade she's. Everyone's got them. But enough of me. There's my shameless plug. Let's uh, exit solo. Uh, enough of me. The reason why we are gathered today is for this, for Fairy Quest. Let me put these books away. Put them away nice. And I am going to be attempting to do my cover. For my great friend, Paul Jenkins. And uh, speaking of my great friend, Paul Jenkins, why don't we add to the stream my great friend, Paul Jenkins. Hello, hey! Man. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great, buddy. It's going great. That cover looks good? amazing, man. Look at the state of that cover. It's so good, man. Yeah, and this so is the great. rough. So they're gonna, we're also going to offer the rough up for sale, too. Yep. So for those of you that maybe can't afford a full, you know, the full-blown cover... The, uh, Paul, offer the rough as well. Yeah. And as a, as a cheaper price. I love roughs personally because I just love the energy. Yeah. And if you see it, it's, gonna, it's got the red, you know, of me playing with the bells and and, and stuff like that. So um, this yeah. one will go up. Uh, and I, I don't know, Paul, when are you going to put them up? Because what do you have? Nine we're gonna, we're gonna, left? Let's find Literally, we're going to do it in the next couple of days. So we're kind of at a point with our raise and we'll bring up our page in a minute. But we are like this close. So we our ask was 40. Um, so that we could bring Fairy Quest 1 and 2 back into print, do special covers with yourself and Kevin Eastman and Mike Bowden and Jill Thompson and Ali Gaza. So we had all that stuff. By the way, before we get going, you're talking to ADD Central here, right, Bill? So I'm like ADD Central. So the question I have to ask you is, what's the score in the hockey game? Because I can literally see it reflected in your mic. It's oh, brilliant. you can yeah. <laughs> watch. Um, it's Colorado's playing. I, I, I stopped because I was – <laughs> just like, you think I don't play cards, right? Right. I I can't right. I can't do it. You know, like I'm like I can't talk about anything because I can see a hockey game reflected. All right, I'll turn it off. No, 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 That's no. Right. I want it to keep going now. I mean, it would blow me up if you turned it I off. I got the Islanders playing the Rangers today, so we'll watch that for sure. That's so funny. I've been exposed. <laughs> so, so I thought it was really funny because I couldn't even function until I worked out like what game was it and what's the score, right? Um. But anyway, so we're going to do a bunch of things. Obviously, we got we got Kevin coming. We got all of that stuff. We got a, a new Mike Bowden cover, which I'll show today. We've got this amazing piece by my favorite person on the internet. Um, her name is Jennifer Meyer. And mm -hmm. she does this. She's like, if you want to, you know, the internet can put us all in a really bad mood. Yes, right? I and do. I don't know why we even bother with it. We shouldn't do it, right? But it, it can also put us in a good mood, right? Like yes. you and myself and Carrie Ann hanging out like and doing all this stuff. This is fun, right? So everybody should be in a good mood and 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 look at our rays and you know kind of enjoy, right? And see you drawing this cover. But Jennifer Meyer is the person that I always tell everyone like, go follow her on Twitter because she does uh, like children's book illustrations, and 
her work is all like little bunny rabbits and stuff, right? And every day she does a sketch and she basically posts it and people go like, oh, right? Because it's just a little rabbit, right? It's like the coolest stuff. And she does like rabbits as mermaids. And then she'd do like, and so she did this beautiful cover for us for Fairy Quest. Um, it's not, we're not going to use it as a cover. We're going to use it as an art print actually. And I'll show it to you in a minute. I'll bring it up and I'll share screen and go through some of our artwork. Um, yeah. But it's, it's so cool. So we're closing in, right? We are at 37.5 pretty much. Um, we had a nice bump. I want to shout out to our good friend, Brian Polito, because um, Brian's one of the good guys. And what happened with us was that um, I will always help people. I'll always mentor people and younger creators and do a favor. You ask me for a favor, I'm your guy, right? I'll always do that. And so I asked Brian the other day, hey, man, could you give us a bit of a signal boost? And he put us in his in his email. And here you go. We got a bump of a couple of thousand closing in on our target. That's awesome. Yeah. So you doing this cover and Kevin and all these people helping each other because you know what it's like in this community. I know the good people, right? And so I know who I can do a favor for as well. Like you ask me anything, Bill, you know it's yours, right? You need anything off of me? You got it, right? I need some I single like, malt, buddy. That's what I need. Right. But you need what? Some single malt. Single Scott. malt. You got it, right? It's yours. <laughs> right? I'll get you some single malt. Yeah. It, it depends. Do you like the smoky flavored and you yes. know, crazy stuff? Or do you yeah. like the... Do you like the kind of standard like? No, uh, I like the I like the the smokier the better. I like really? you know, PD. Yeah, I love the woodsy stuff. That's what I really like. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm not. Scott. I like single more, but I, I'm more of your bland kind of. I like Glenn Fittich and Glenn Livett. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll but, you know they're good too. I like those. They're they're good go to scotches, of course. Yeah. But I um I don't know. I just my my bro old cap just really got me into into scotch and and uh, I just yeah. I love it and so much so. That like my brother Isaac came over a few weeks ago to help me fulfill when we were fulfilling, um, packing up all the stretch goals and everything. And he brought like Widow Jane, like whiskey or bourbon. What is that? Uh, or Angel's Envy or something. I forget yeah. what. And yeah. bourbon, it's, it, bourbon's just too sweet for me. You know, I like yeah. it. It's too sweet. And I'm like, ah, nah, nah. you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm more into, I like a nice smoky woodsy scotch. Everyone's got their thing, right? Like for me, here's the crazy, crazy thing with alcohol, right? I'm not, I'm a Brit, right? So I think I have an iron constitution, you know? So <laughs> in terms of like drinking, it never really affects me that much except gin, which you can give me one glass of gin and I'm done, right? I am, it's so crazy that it does that to us. But um, if it's schnapps specifically, I, d I don't even ever, I feel like I'm, I could drink 30 glasses or one and it would have the same difference. It doesn't get me. So, so I, consequently I'm, I'm not much of a, I don't drink a ton, you know, like it's funny that you say, cause you were drinking. That's what you were drinking. It was, uh, was, um, schnapps the other day. Schnapps. I'm like, Oh my God, he's going to be loaded. <laughs> but no. I just do. We had our stream, our, our San Diego comic con stream. And you know, while we're at it, when we bring in, what do you make an introduction to our guest here? Okay. Our, so let's, let's, we're supposed let's to be hosting on you from, and, from Meta Studios, here we go. We'll fly the flag. From Meta Studios, let's bring on our producer and creative liaison and also Team Fairy. Let's bring on Carrie Ann Hunt because she's awesome and she's amazing. And she is Tinkerbell to some extent, we think. She's brilliant. Let's bring her in. Hello. Thank you. And there she is in the castle, yes. in the fairy castle with the fairy cat. Look at the state of that cat. <laughs> It's literally the Instagram cat from the front page of Instagram. That's Rune, the cat. This could he be wanted, the new. Yeah, you could be the new cat, the new Instagram cat. I think he wanted he wanted to to come on the show because he came, he actually came up and he put his paws up on my legs to get up into my lap just to say right as you were introducing me. So I think he knew. I think he was there's, like, oh, it's my there's cat. not a moment, and you know this, Carrie Ann, right? Like when you're on camera all the time there could be a moment where they freeze frame and then you don't look good. You know, your eyes are closed and your tongue's kind of hanging out. Oh yeah. I think you can, I think you can freeze frame rune at any moment and he just looks like perfect. You know. <laughs> so we're hanging out with Carrie Ann and we're drawing a cover today yeah. and we're going to tell Bill, we'll sort of tell you a little bit about like what's going on with our rays. And the trick mm -hmm. is that we are at 37, five almost. Yep. I can really add close to real our quick. Goal. Let yeah. me add that to the screen. I'm going to add it. 
Okay, so here we are. And you know, but I got to tell you, um, a lot of the campaigns that I pledge for are, are usually on Mondays. Yeah. Right on Mondays because I'll get the I'll get the notification. Either people send it out on Fridays. You know, I try to I try to just draw on Fridays or write. And I oh, there's my wife. Sorry, there's my wife. Well, I'll I'll take over while he's busy on the phone. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, so, hang, on, hang on, let me see. Hello. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> we all answer the phone for him. Yeah. Okay, great. I love you. Bye. She's gonna go out. She can't do anything. Oh. <laughs> anyway, but so Monday was my big day to, 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 to contribute because then I go back to social media. I go on and I start seeing and I go into my emails um, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, OK, so there's fair request number three. Oh, I didn't pledge for that. Let me pledge for it. Um, but uh, but then because I did the promo, Niall did the promo for us and we were talking about it. And I went to Kickstarter to add the link and Kickstarter was down all day Monday. Yeah. 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 Lost the whole friggin' day. It yeah, scared me. I texted you about it, Paul, because I was like, where did Kickstarter go? Why is our thing not there? <laughs> yeah, we, lo we lost a day, but you know how this goes. So, Billy, I'm interested in your raise recently, right? So you did just Indiegogo and... No, I did Kickstarter raised. first. I did Kickstarter first, and then we did just Indiegogo. Then yeah, we did so Indiegogo. That's, that's, that's where we're going, right? We're going down that road because we understand that there are people on in Indiegogo that really like Indiegogo and that's fine. Like we, we've never been to that audience and we'd love to, we, you know, you're gonna I love that audience. You're yeah. I, I can't wait. Audience. Right. Our book is for everybody. And the best part about what happens with fairy quest is that everybody kind of loves it like old and young, you know, whatever. Right. So, so as publishers, you know, as well as I do, um, we just want to make the book available to everyone. But when you were doing your raise, I think you started on Kickstarter, right? Yes, we start on Kickstarter because that's what we knew, and that's what we yeah. had done earlier. Um, Debbie is adamant about doing them both at the same simultaneously again, just because we had over a thousand backers on Kickstarter. Yeah. Personally, I'm like, I'd rather just do Indiegogo, but I guess we feel because of the new um, Haikyo book, our next Sheed book that that launches on September second. That is which of which I'm done with ten pages already. Everyone out there, boom. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, we just feel that because it, it is part two of the story technically that we should at least give it one more go on Indiegogo and kick uh, on Kickstarter and Indiegogo just to see how it works out. Right. But um, did you, did you do, sorry, yeah. buddy, did you do Kickstarter first and then Indiegogo? Cause that makes a lot more sense to me. Like you do one and then you do the next one. That's what we did with zombie Sama and, but our, and, but our, and, but with, in, with, with she return of the warrior, a book that's at press now, um, that book we did simultaneously. Really? Yep. Wow, that must have been. I love Indiegogo book. because what I what I love about, it, like I said, I'm very happy with Kickstarter with our Kickstarter backers. I mean, man, you know they they help change my life. But yep. with Indiegogo, what's great about that is that you know it's it's a judgment free zone. I feel. Um, yep. I'm very happy that you guys got a project we love. You know, um, and. Uh, we never got any of that. We never got a project of the day. We never got a project we love. We never got any kind of extra boost boost from them. Yeah. And then when I was on on Twitter one time, I had mentioned what should I do for the next campaign. Someone from Indiegogo themselves actually reached out to us, right. like Indiegogo itself, saying, "You know, come with us. We're so we're, you know we're happy. Uh, uh, you know, we'll 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 take care of you. Whatever, we'll do you right." And even when I mentioned that it's on Indiegogo, you'll get someone from Indiegogo on Twitter will retweet you and say, "We're just so happy that you know that you that you chose Indiegogo. Thank you." Uh -huh. You know, they're very engaged in it, the company's very engaged in the comic creators as well. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. And you know, like we want to be our own publishers, right? Like you and I have been around the block a couple of times, and so you know, I've done the mainstream, I've made Marvel their money, I've made DC their money, I've, I've done the other stuff. And it's like, look, the best form of publishing is yourself. Publish yep. yourself, get yourself, directly connect to fans. Um, you know, we had quite a snafu with our second Kickstarter uh, with our fulfillment house. And so we said, we're never going to let that happen again. We're going to do it. So we're like getting reconnected to our fan base. Um, but I kind of can't wait to do Indiegogo. It's just we 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 need to get Kickstarter right and 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 get our level. And um, I think the trajectory of our project right now, we're at 37362, right? 
So the trajectory of our project, as long as we get over 40 and we get up, you know, what we're going to do is start giving away stuff. Um, we'll probably announce a little bit of it today. Like, so, so, you know, uh, we were working late into the night last night, myself and the redoubtable Stogie, who you see on the, uh, on the, the stream here, Stogie and I were working the first person in. <laughs> yeah. Stogie and I were working in the middle of the night to work out what we want to do with our artwork and with our prints. Right. So, you know, with Jennifer Meyer's piece, which I'll show in a minute, it looks I love so, it so much. Isn't it's it great? My oh my God. I love it. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to bring it up right now. I'll go find it and I'll bring it up so that you guys can see what we're talking about. Um, I love her artwork in general. Um, but and we'll post, we'll post these covers up too, Paul. I'll send you the files. All right. And then you could load them up. Yeah. Man. Um, and, and whatever, you know, whatever you get, you know, whatever you think is fair, well, you know, whatever you think it should, it should go for, put it up and hopefully. Be amazing, man. I think, yeah. yeah. I, I love it, man. And, and this is what I'm saying, right? Like I, I think one thing's going to happen, right, Bill? I don't know if you agree with me, but I get the sense that something's going to happen. I think given the camaraderie that you and I feel and that I feel right now for Brian Polito, I'm really grateful to him. Right. You know, he, 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 he pushed us and he, and he gave us, you know, gave us kind of space in his day. Right. And I've known Brian for 30 years. So I've, I think, you know, that's, I mean, ever since I was at Tundra and he came to us there and we've been pretty friendly and I see a few other people kind of coming around and, and Fabrice Sapolsky, who was my editor at Humanoids that I did Scarcity with, Fabrice uh, just did one. And so I backed it and pushed it. Um, John McRae is coming out with a new art of John McRae today. And I'm like, nice. awesome. I'm going to push that too. And I get a sense that there's going to be like this, this group of comrades of publishers and they're all, we're all self publishers and we're all just going to be able to push each other and help each other and build. And I, and I, like I said, I want to throw kudos out to Brian Polito because I think Brian was right front and center in the middle of that, you know? Yeah, well, Brian is the king of Kickstarter, and yeah. then when you go and, and 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 then when you go to Indiegogo, you know you're gonna see it. It's gonna it's gonna blow you away. You've yeah, got I can't wait. I'm he excited. Has cyber right? over 1.2 million dollars on his cyber fraud book. Crazy. Wow. The, 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 the Indiegogo back backers are so passionate, and it's 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 wonderful. Again, not, not that the Kickstarter backers aren't, but it's it's really cool. It's it's just so encouraging. That you're out there with your art and you, and your you know your talent and you throw out your creativity and they respond to it yeah and they I, respond I, to it wonderfully and it's just such a good feeling. Again, I like I said, I feel like it's it's the 1990s all over again. Yeah, <laughs> it feels that way, man, and it's cool, right? And so, you know, at Meta, we've been working really hard, right? So, you know, we've got uh, you'll you'll see, you know, we've got Stogie, Carrie Ann, uh, Sarah from Meta Studios is probably on the stream right now, I think, and hanging out and listening. So we're all doing our thing. And last night was funny. Stogie and I sat, I can't remember, it's probably like three o'clock in the morning, and we're going through stuff that we want to make, <laughs> like keychains and Aww. bookmarks and stuff. Yeah. We go, like, what do we do, you know? Yeah, well, um, so I, I just want to talk about the cover here that I'm doing real quick. I'm going to make it a little bigger. What I'm going to do, Paul, um, yeah. maybe, uh, single, is that, okay, so I have it on the light box. As you guys can see, let me shut this light off. You'll be able to see it better. Beneath it is the rough, um, which we will be selling, uh, which you'll be selling too, which will be going up. There's the rough. Then this yeah. is going to be the, 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 the final. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this out, and then I'm going to ink it, Paul, with my Beryl Prisma colors that mm. give a really nice soft touch to it. It's I mean this this is like black. It melts on the paper and it and it gives such a soft texture, especially when I'm doing female characters. I just it really I love it. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll talk colorists. I have some colorists in mind. Um up to you if you already have your your colorist. Yeah we we so have it's all it's all yours, buddy. It's yeah, man. No, I appreciate that. So our colorist uh, for the main book, Leo Leonardo Olia, um, mm -hmm. I'll show a little bit of his work in a minute because when people see his stuff, you know, he is a massive part of what makes people love um, Fairy Quest. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a huge part of it, right? His artwork, like what he does to enhance artwork, but to respect the original content and all that kind of stuff, he's. One of a kind. We love Leo, right? So I think that you'll love the way that he treats your work, you know, because you know how that goes, right? Like when you've got a beautiful piece of work and you hand it in and someone changes it materially, that's yeah. no fun for you, right? So yeah. 
I think you're going to love Leo. Like, Le So I'll, I'll show that in a minute. I'll tell you what I can do if you want to. We can get started here. So I'm going to bring up. Uh, hey, Paul. Yes. We've got a group of people on. Do you want to maybe in incentivize them to start donating? Do you want Do you want to talk about the hat really fast? Uh, the what now? Oh, yeah, in the hat. Yeah, go ahead, Carrie Ann, because I want what? you to show your pink yeah. Victorian hat that you've got with you. Hey, you, guys, you guys talk for a bit because I'm going to do the face now. And it's okay. nervous. Yeah, concentrate. So, Carrie Ann, tell us why you have a giant pink Victorian hat on you. I mean, because it's part of my daily wardrobe, one. Uh, you never know, Paul. You never know when there's going to be a tea party. Um, hi, Cat. <laughs> Cat's, um, Cat's one of the names in the hat, actually. Um, Excellent. So what, what I oh cat in the hat ha <laughs> you got two ADD people on your stream today Billy <laughs> yeah is 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 uh he's saying I'm not sure is Frank running things or we got Boomer Tucci's oh, no. at Boomer Tucci's whims the whims of the interweb well, I'm trying to draw and 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 have an interview so I'm gonna tell you about a content a little you know T J you're gonna start running this how about that buddy. Oh my gosh. Control <laughs> All right. Monitors and stuff. Boys, you're have to go outside. Settle down. Okay. It's hat time. <laughs> so uh, we're doing a little wait, bit. What happened? Hang on. I'm sorry. What issue? Uh, hang on. I'm sorry. Real quick. Not sure it's front. Wait, wait. Not that one. This. I'm not sure it. It's the first. Oh, Stogie's Sto saying that for some reason everybody's avatars are showing up as just blank red circles on the screen, which is weird. Like, you know, the. Do you not have your cameras on? Um, I, see I see you guys. I see no, I, th I think it might be the avatars in the in the chat. Actually, everybody's avatar oh. isn't showing up. I don't know. That's I, see the, I see the avatars are working. Um, that's yeah. not on my end, then. That's got to be Streamyard because I see all the avatars. I see Stogie's got the little guy with the sunglasses, and TJ's got the 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 bon Bonnable. Can you guys see us? Like, can you comment in the chat and let us know if you can see Sarah us? Sarah Boyd's got a beautiful picture of herself. That's Kat's right. got something that's kind of small. I can't see it. Heroin Berg's there. He's got his thing. So yeah, when yeah. it pops up, do you just see, like, do you guys see that from Heroin Berg? Do you see his comic? I do. Yeah. It says, it's a, Victoria says that she can see us. Yeah. This yeah. is like, are we real? Can you see us? Really yeah, it's stream yard. Okay. By the way, by the way, I want to say hi to uh, Victoria, who is an old friend of uh, Kickstarter. I remember Victoria from the very first one. So it's really funny, you know. You come back after these years because it, it took me a while to get Fairy Quest back, and all these old friends showed up, like Victoria, and I was like, "Hey, Victoria, I remember you from the first one." <laughs> so it's funny you remember these names. You start becoming really quite close to your fan base, Bill. You know, that's one of the things that I love about this. You, you. You realize, you know, even when there's an issue or a problem, uh, you know, we had a few because of, of how things went a little sideways in the second one with, with some of the fulfillment, right? And so coming back and like addressing some of these and dealing with people directly and having them say, okay, well, I was a bit frustrated, but now I'm not. It's really good for us, right? It keeps us on yeah. our toes and it reminds us of something that, frankly, I didn't need reminding, but I like the reminder anyway, which is, you people pay our wages and like, like the people out there, our fans pay our wages. I'm not really a guy um, that has charged at conventions for signatures. Um, that's, I, I get why people do. And I have no issue with it at all, but I want to be really clear. Like I, I understand why people do it, but I will take the signature thing to, to help raise money for Kickstarter or the signed and numbered and things like that, 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 that help you to get to your number. Mm -hmm. People love that stuff anyway. But the way I've always looked at it is that people pay my wages, you know. So when they come to me at a convention, I really tend to say, you already pay my wages. I don't really want you to pay me any more money to sign something. I'm grateful that you you did it, right? Um, so anyway, hang on a minute. We derailed Fairy Queen. Go on, off we go. Get, get, no, oh, no, yeah, we're sorry, Fairy Queen. It's okay. Now, how could they, if someone bids on it, how will they, how does this work? Do they confirm it here in the chat? Yeah, and so, you so guys, they, is, is there a level on? on so I to explain all the rules. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get, give Billy a drink and let him draw. <laughs> all right. Um, no. So uh, what I did on my page this past week is I was doing a raffle for a set of the books. And so if people uh, shared our Kickstarter, 
liked the Meta Studios page and liked the Fablewood page on our social media, then they got their name put in this hat. So there's a couple of people like Kat, who's on the stream right now, and a couple other people who did, did it that way, but we're extending it. So for anybody who's watching, if you make a contribution to the Kickstarter campaign, share it on your social media and we'll have Stogie or me or somebody will check and make sure you did it, right? So it's a really good to do it, right? So you have to donate and then share the Kickstarter and like our two social media pages, um, which is Fablewood uh, at Fablewood Stories and uh, at Meta Studios ATL on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, and then your name goes into the hat. And if you are one of the winners that donated and got your name in the hat on the live stream, then you get a set with collector covers. Um, if you are the winner and you donated on and you uh, got your name put in the hat from my page, then if you just shared and didn't donate, you would win a set of the books. If you shared and donated, you would win a set of the books with collector covers. Ooh. Yeah. Basically, oh. giveaways. And let's also point out that we're going to be throwing in a bunch of extra swag. So, for example... Some of our extra swag will be uh, bookmarks. We did that one, Bill. Bill, by the way, you're welcome to chime in at any point and tell us what we have missed because we're doing bookmarks. Uh, we're going to be doing a print um, of, you know, a particular piece of artwork and some other ones too. I think we really want to try and see if we can do um, greeting cards, which I think is a really oh, cool one. Nice. So, you know, like, um, like a Christmas card or a greeting card or something like that. We actually oh, found nice. that that's a pretty useful one because – I don't see where a postcard works, but I do quite like the idea that of a greeting card, right? So we looked at that the other day and we were like, that's pretty cool, right? So, uh, the magnets are too, if you want to do magnets. I, I tra like and trading cards are big. There are people that are just collecting trading cards. Now, here's the thing. Because we, yeah, we, we, we didn't know enough of that about that, right? We didn't know enough about trading cards. We... We felt that we were relatively prepared, but there's some new things that we, you know, it's been a while since I did this, right? So it's all a question of like, where can I get it manufactured, right? Like Christmas right. cards, TJ says, and by the way, I need to shout someone out. Hang on a second. Let me go back up. Kevin Cruz. Kevin? Kevin Cruz. So, right, hang on. Here we go. You wanted me to say hi to you, right? Hi, hey. Kevin. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I said hi to my mate, Kevin Cruz. It's been a while, Kevin. Good to see that you're still doing okay. Look at TJ. TJ says, look at Rune. Paul has made him angry. Yet yeah, Rune no. left, left for a little while. It's not possible. <laughs> I don't make Rune angry. I make Rune happy. No, Uncle Paul. Rune loves his Uncle Paul. That's right. He um, loves Uncle Paul. So, and, oh, Heroinberg, thank you. Thank you for the fairy path shout out. There you go. That's yeah, awesome. That's my there you go. Fairy path. There's yeah. Carrie Ann's thing. So we, there you go, it's Kevin. Uh, so we <laughs> have, like, so I think people understood yeah. that giveaway, but basically during the stream, if you in the comments and or, you know, get in touch with us, if you have donated, if you're a backer on Kickstarter and you can show us basically by giving us a shout out online and you can put it in the comments, then we, Carrie Ann's going to put you in the hat right now to win some free stuff. In the meantime, when we send out the Kickstarter stuff, we've already announced that we're doing these uh, bookmarks. So I may as well give away a couple of things that Stogie and I worked out last night, right? So we're changing the bookmarks. At the moment, they look good, but we're actually going to make them metallic bookmarks, which is really cool. So they're going to have like metallic ink and they're going to look really beautiful. Um, nice. Yeah, they're, they're going to look really nice, right? Because we want to make sure that like in, in our one, and I'm sure you went through this as well, Bill, like we're trying to make sure that we can give value so you know production values on on our books are really high anyway um we do like really thick books that have embossed covers and all of that and we we announce what we're doing with the special covers um all of the special covers will have metallic ink on the on the edges anyway um every single one of the special covers will be signed and they'll have a personalized message in them so we hope to do loads of them because, you know, everybody's going to laugh at me when I start crying myself to sleep after writing 200 <laughs> messages. <laughs> um, Paul, you, um, uh, what's the size of the book? What's the page count? So the book is 56 pages. It's actually 46 pages of content. The inside front cover will be like a map of Fablewood. Um, okay. And we, hey, Dave. Uh, so we, it's um, eight and a half wide by 12 inches high. So it's a foot high. It's a really big book, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. 
the big thing about it is, I, I in fact, I'll go get one in a second. I always want something that I want to own. I'm not going to make the stuff that I want to own. So I don't really have a big affinity for the smaller kind of floppy comics. I'd much rather own a hardcover and one that you can kind of pass down. So you buy it once and it sticks around your family for 100 years, right? So we even put Tyvek in, in the... In the, in the spine so that it would hold it together a little bit better. So we're trying to do things that don't fall apart that you can keep forever, you know? Yeah. And, that, and now we're going back to print with all three of them. So they'll all be uh, on the same level. They'll all look really good. And um, we expect to have that in print for the rest of my life and presumably everybody else's as well. It's going to be great. Yeah. Is there a uh, it's, it's so we can get the earlier editions on the campaign now on the Kickstarter now? Yeah. So what we did was they're out of print. They've not been in print for a long time, right? So instead of instead of putting out book three, we said we're going to put out book three and reprint one and two. So we got special covers for each of one, two, and three. We got an Ali Gaza cover for each of one, two, and three. We've got the the Umberto Ramos cover for each of one, two, and three. Um, can I uh, quickly share my screen, mate? I don't know if you know how to let me do that. Yeah, I, yeah, I will. I just I just wanted to see how the face looks. That's why I, <laughs> I enlarged it so I could check it. Um, yeah, let's let's share your screen, Paul. Hang on, add to stream. There you go, brother. All right. Oh, look at it. Look how beautiful it so is. This is this beautiful cover, and it's by my favorite wow. person on the internet, uh, Jennifer Meyer. So if you go to, I think it's either Jennifer Meyer or J.L. Meyer on Twitter, uh, you will find Jennifer. She is at Jennifer-Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R. And I'll write it up and I'll send it to you in the private chat so we can just kind of post it. Okay. Um, or Stogie may have post it actually since he's out there. So Jennifer is this person that does these beautiful art that is so pleasant, right? Like it just she does bunnies and she does like, and so if you look at this piece of art right up here, there's like up here, there's like little bunnies hidden in it. Right? They're everywhere. Cause I yeah. asked her to, I was like, Hey Jennifer, would you mind like if we're going to do one? And I kind of designed the cover with her and I said, I think it would be great if we did them in, in like Oz slash in a field of poppies sleeping or something like that with bunnies poking out. And she did this cover. Right. And What's so great about it is this is so much what the story is about. Like Wolf looks after his name is Mr. Wolf and he looks after red all the time. And so he's like protecting her as they sleep. Um, and I just, I'm telling you right now that as brilliant and beautiful as Jennifer's art is, and as much as it puts you in a good mood, she is even better. She's literally as advertised in person. She is the sweetest, kindest, giggliest person that I've run into. And so when I met her, I was thinking, you know, okay, I don't really know Jennifer, but I, I love her and I love talking to her. And so I met her and she is as as kind and sweet and wonderful in person as you think she should be. In fact, she's even better. And I'm is like she gig more giggly than gigglier. Is she more giggly or gigglier than TJ James? Uh, our possibly, resident? Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> But I'm going to go out on them and say she is. She she's super smiley. She she cracks up laughing all the time. I kept saying to her like Jennifer, I love your stuff so much, and she was so genuinely flattered every time I said it, right? And it's sort of like one of those people you just want to be around. Like she's just the best, right? And so she did this cover for us. And so let me tell you what we're we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to be, you know, we do these kind of stretch goal things. And part of it is that we just want to give stuff away as well, right? We want to make sure that people get stuff. So at 40, and we're getting there really close. So we want to get there quickly. Um, at 40, we will um, be giving away um, a, a kind of card of this anyway. But we're going to announce the... Um, we're going to announce a print of this, like a high quality print, right? Nice. So that we can send that to people. We're very careful with this one, Bill, um, because you know when you have problems with fulfillment. And I think you told me the other day you were like packing something. You realized it went in the wrong boxes and you had to unpack the whole thing. Yeah, we, we added one extra bag that we yeah. should, uh, with comic bags. 
So right. we wasted a whole bunch of self-sealing co- about about two thousand of them. Yeah, so you, shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it drives you nuts, right? And so, yeah. given the fact that the last one, the fulfillment that when when Boom did it, like the fulfillment went sideways, we were, you know, I'm personally so unhappy about that because that's my reputation that they were messing with, right? And um, I did not dig that at all, as you can imagine. And so what we wanted to do was to make sure that everything that we send out isn't like things like mugs and statues right now. We don't want to do the extra stuff. We want to do it mostly printed materials because yeah. then the shipping will be right and the fulfillment will be right. And we everything won't get can fit in one box, even with the prints that we're, we're doing oversized prints. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to see if anyone out there, if they mind, you know, comic size prints or do they want the, I mean, you have some beautiful artwork there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you do want the oversized prints, but Jimmy, what size, Jimmy, what size is an oversized print? Eleven by seventeen. Yeah, right. I think or comic I or comic book size prints. That's, That's really. Right. I like both. It depends on where I'm going to put it in the house, you know. Well, we think at the moment that we're going to do uh, eight by tens. Basically, we're going to do it like that size because our book itself, right, is 12 oh, by right. eight and a half, right? Yeah. So, that's so what perfect. we realized was that we could actually either contain it inside the front cover of the book or just on top of the book, right? And so it goes in it goes in, and it doesn't mess with any of our fulfillment. The, the whole point of getting through the Kickstarter and doing really well with it right now was to make sure that our fulfillment was amazing, right? Um, yeah. that, we, that we weren't going to we weren't going to break anything or mess it up or, or, or have any problems with like trying to fit a mug into a box or something like that. Um, and, and what we'll do is at some point when all of this goes up on the meta store, we'll do much more stuff. We'll do mugs and we'll do statues and all the things that we want to do, but that's not for right now. Right. I, I mean, if we did it right now, we would just get in our own way. We want to make sure we can deliver. So the fans look back at us now and go, I'm really glad that, that Paul and Meta Studios took control back of the project so that we don't have any of the issues that we had with the fulfillment last time, you know? That makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Get, get it out, get it to the people quick enough yep. because you know your numbers are just going to grow even bigger once they know that you, you fulfill. Yeah, I, and, love, and, I love yeah. that you're doing eight by tens too because um, it's a really big pain in the butt when you, you know, like when you don't want to pay for a custom frame for everything. <laughs> Right. So it's nice that you're doing like a frameable, you know, like a frameable, an easily frameable size. That's another yeah. great idea. That's something I didn't even think about that myself. Yeah. That's an excellent idea about the frames. And now, um, are the art pages drawn differently? Are they drawn a different size or are they drawn like standard comic book size? No, they're drawn a different size because this is these are like French albums. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop my screen right now and I'll go back in and I'll go find, uh, you know, some of the pages from the past. And I'll go find some of the pages from the present, right? And um, yeah. and and so it's eight and a half wide by by twelve high. Like that's a big book, right? That's a big ass book. Yep. What we're gonna do is when we <laughs> get fairy, fairy ass. Say again. Fairly, I'm trying to try and fairly, and say you know fairly big book, but it's like a fair fairy big book. <laughs> it's a fairy. Oh, book, yeah. oh my. <laughs> I know. Oh, you feel so bad for like Carrie Ann. She's like, oh, Billy. Aww. Yeah, both, both Carrie and I, Carrie Ann and I are, bo- are both going. I see what you did there, and don't you wish you hadn't? I <laughs> shoot, especially now. But hey, at least I admit to it. I can. <laughs> you know, I'm a I'm a pun free zone, dude. As a writer, I'm like you pun near me, and then it's just no, oh, no. Yeah. Sometimes, but like some of them are really good. Like I've sneak attacked you with a couple of puns before, Paul. <laughs> puns, are, puns are wrong. Puns are not allowed in my oh, in my puns realm. Puns too. Don't let him fool you. Please. So, um, all right. Well, if you want to do that art, and then Carrie Ann, you could tell us how you came to be, you know, one of the big members of the Meta Studios. Oh yeah. Okay. How did you come into our lives? How. No. Oh. And just bringing sunshine, just spreading sunshine everywhere you go in fairy dust. It was a dark and stormy night at the edge of the woods. And no. <laughs> um, I met Paul several years ago at a, um, I'm an actress as well. And I met Paul at a networking event for actors. And it was this kind of bizarre, like speed dating style thing where you got to meet producers and directors. And um, at the time I had just finished. Oh, hold on, hold on. Stop there for a second. That it wasn't a speed dating thing, just so we're clear. I'm a very oh, happily married man. No, right? no, no, no. <laughs> we know how things work down there in Georgia. Yeah, really. No, 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 no. 
it was set up in a speed dating style where yeah. actors would go talk to producers and directors for like two minutes at a time and they'd ring a bell and you'd walk to the next one. So um, <laughs> speed greeting, speed networking. Um, <laughs> but, um, and at the time I had just done a production, uh, a stage production of an adaptation of one of Neil Gaiman's short stories called Snow Glass Apples with um, Lisa Stock. And I, I played uh, his version of Snow White, which is very different from the fairy tales. Uh, but Paul, you know, Paul knows Neil and Paul, 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 Paul. We're not that deep in Georgia. Jeez. Paul, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> saw that on my resume. I think that's what, I think that's how we started talking. And then we've just been on, kind of been put on panels together and kind of in each other's orbit in, in the film circuit a little bit for a while. And then Paul's also been a really fantastic um, mentor as well for me with Thorne. Um, and then also on another project that, um, that we're working on as well that uh, myself and some other folks are working on too called darkness falls so paul's been very generous with his time and um helping us navigate learning how to write a better script and how to exist in the in the world with trying to get things made um but then you know fairy quest was i think the first thing of yours paul that that i saw i, I remember when we first met i think you gave me copies of fairy quest um because i still have some of the old um old copies and then um in january of this year i helped put together the live fairy quest experience i guess you'd call it at uh we could show some of that we should show the walkthrough because bill did we show you that thing before you showed me some stuff if you got it to share can it's you hilarious. Oh, yeah i can bring it up on youtube and we'll uh, share the youtube yeah. yeah that'd be great but yeah okay. that's, um but that's what the, i did that um with them and in January for the Pinewoods Winter Gala, and we did a haunted fairy tale forest, and did a, a playthrough of that. And Paul played a character, and I played a, a lost, lost, broken princess. And we had um, kids from Amario's Art Academy as these little dolomites that helped lead everybody around. And it was a, it was a tremendous amount of fun. And then since then, I've been uh, coordinating Zoom table reads for some of Paul's scripts, so that. Um, us actors don't go bonkers in quarantine and also so that Paul can hear it out loud. And uh, yeah, and then I got I got my fancy shiny titles recently and I'm very <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, carry on, go. And I, got, I got my fancy shiny titles. Oh, what's that echo? What's that? Someone got their YouTube on. Oh, uh, me. I turned it on to try to get it off and it went Boomer off. Ball. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, it's it's great. I got you know I got my my fancy shiny titles and I love Meta. Meta is really in line with what I um, my own mission as a as a creator and an artist and an actor and all the things. And I love everybody and I guess they love me too since they adopted me. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing one thing that's worth bearing in mind, Bill, right? Is so Meta like my company. We are big on on like mentorship and education and advancement and stuff like that. So we we do a lot of work in that regard. You know, like we care very much about like building not just an industry, but building like an industry where we keep educating and teaching people. Because that that in that way, you got sustainability for us, right? Like we're going to bring in more people and more people, and then and then at a certain point, someone's going to do well and help us, and and so. It's that whole thing of like, I think creators are starting to get really empowered and companies are starting to kind of look to each other and say, you know, we, we should do this all together, man, because we're we're much better when we all do it together, you know? Yep, yep. Yeah, and, and, and you need that positivity. There's just so much garbage, especially with social media. Yeah. And there's just so much filth out there and, and, and just assholes and things like that, you, you know, that, that are just That's the nice thing about meta though. It's the nice thing about meta. And it's also part of like, if any of you go to the fairy path website, you'll see our mission statement. Hi, black cat guy. Hello, black cat guy. <laughs> um, you'll see like the mission statement that we have on fairy path is very, is similar in a lot of ways to meta's mission statement where, you know, we all, we're all just committed to putting some good back in the world and being, um, I don't know, you know, being positive influences on the people around us through our art. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, makes makes me happy. And Paul, um, Paul's also directed me a couple of times, and we've um, been actors together in a in a workshop. That's like right, that. we've acted together. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up this. Um, I am going to find because I think this is worth showing. Right, I'm gonna bring up um, our. Um, 
oh, uh, the thing that we did for Fairy Quest, because that is cool, right? A like disclaimer that's... that I look dead, not because I had pneumonia while we were doing that, but because I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be like lost and broken in the woods. So that's why if you're like, boo wee, Carrie Ann looks terrible. That's why. <laughs> I like I like the fact that Carrie Ann, you know, you know, the first rule of this is you're you're not allowed to start with an apology in oh, there you are, right? It was a, it was a um, an entertaining anecdote to kick off the viewing of the video. Paul. Yeah. Hey Stogie, if you are there, if you are there, and I know you are, Stogie, can you can you point me towards the one that is the Pinewood Gala walkthrough? Because this is I think oh I got it I got it. It's all right I've got it. Here we go. I can. I can Game share unfair. it and let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me do this then. Let me share a screen. Paul, let me pick out a costume um, for everybody. Yeah. So we dressed him like a ridiculous Mad Hatter. It was great. <laughs> Please. I look good, <laughs> man. <laughs> Everybody looked great. Everybody did. Scott, um, who was who was there too, and Maddie and everybody. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share this Everyone's contact, pretty. share the audio. Here we go. This is us. I gotta full screen it a little bit. All right, you guys have that Great. up there. Yeah, we got it. You ready? All right, here we go. I'm gonna play it. Dun, da, da, da. Look at that logo. So good. Follow me. Can you hear it? Watch I can hear. It. Just wonder if we should mute ourselves. Come on in, gather round. Make it louder. Hello, gather round. Thank you. I am your storyteller, here to tell you a tale or two. Now, uh, has either of you been handed a key by any chance? Yes. Yes? Uh, well, I'm terribly sorry about that. The bloody Jester does that to everybody. Unfortunately, that key is going to keep you trapped inside the forest unless you can find your way out of the other side. I'll help you as much as I can. Uh, but I may be crazy, I'm just not stupid. Anyway, beware, because there are dolomites about, so keep an eye on your wallets. <clears throat> Our story begins twice upon a time. Once for the dark times that befell our beautiful forest of Faberwood, and twice for the here and now. Here you are inside the dark forest, and now you are in trouble. There are dolomites everywhere, some people call them shadow people. Some say they are the ghosts of people who have come before, travelers lost inside the forest. Others say they're the spirits of unruly children who are here to trap you in the forest forever. Or maybe, just maybe, they're here to help you find a way out. Well, there's only one way to find out. Follow that Dolomite and uh, keep an eye on your valuables. Ah. Well, this is freaking this awesome. It's a problem. <laughs> As I understand it, the Tin Man was the one looking for a heart, and the, the Scarecrow was the one looking for a brain. But it's this damp forest, it gets us all confabulated, and we don't know if coming or going hither or thither. I suppose the problem is, we don't really know the way out. What's, what's that? Oh, deeper into the forest, huh? Well, Okay then, follow me. I'll tell you a story along the way to keep your spirits up, although I don't much fancy our chances. Yeah, gather round, gather round. <clears throat> this is the story of the beloved land of Fablewood. This was once a beautiful place, but after a while the darkness fell. The queens and the witches were at war. One day, someone dropped a house on the Wicked Witch of the East, and there was a turf war between the queens and the witches. Now, before you know it, there are porridge invasions and people falling down hills and people falling off of walls. But the saddest story of all was the story of Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. You see, they had become friends, but sadly, the wolf had lost his vixen and his cubs to the very same hunters who lived inside their story. The tragedy was so bad, and poor Red loved the wolf so much. I tried to comfort her, but she wanted to escape with the wolf. So I led them to the yellow brick road and told them they should return to the real world in the opposite direction. They took my advice, but it brought them through the dark forest, 
they're the only two people ever to get out the other side. So, this is as far as I can take you, I'm afraid. But there's another Dolomite over here that may or may not help you through the forest. So, go ahead and see if you can get out of the forest that way. Good luck. So you guys had to buy all this stuff? Oh, sorry. A million miles from where you are now is a land of make believe. If you close your eyes and spin around in a circle and follow the fingernail moon, you will eventually end up in an enchanted forest called Fablewood. Only, it's not so enchanted anymore. I forgot my thinkability. I don't remember how to get to real world anymore. Red Riding Hood and her dog told me once. I think it was straight back from morning, second star to the left. Here, this way seems as good as any. Come on. Yes, yes, this is it. This is where Red and her dog went backwards up the red brick road. Now hurry, follow them quickly, or you'll end up like me. I was one of you once, but now I'm becoming one of them. A shadow person. Do me a favor. When you get out of the dark forest, promise me that you'll take a photograph and send me a postcard. I want to remember what it was like to be happy. Happy. Happy is a feeling. I like you. This is as far so as sad. I ever get. <laughs> I don't know how to open that door, and the Dolomite guards won't let me through. But, oh, they, they have their hands out. Maybe, maybe they want something. I think they want something. Do you have, you, you have, the, you have a key? Yes. Why don't you try? See if it'll work. Good luck. Thank you for visiting the dark forest. Don't forget to take a picture. Send me a postcard. Bye. So you can like use the what we say in the word bubble up here. You can write one down. We're gonna come in and take a picture. You need to go over and take a picture. We're gonna take a picture. We got a deadline though. So we come in. <laughs> really awesome. I'm not gonna turn this on right now because it's a dress rehearsal. And that's all right. You understand, Ted. We're gonna pretend we're taking pictures. We're gonna come in right now and. You're glad it's over. Thank you. Click back the picture. All right, get out of here. You I'm not going to take your picture because it's a dress rehearsal. You got to go, too. You're going way too long. It's time to go. Get out of here. I got a deadline. The next people are coming. Bye. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, thank that's you, Chad. So cool, guys. So that's our, that's our redoubtable producer right there. Uh, <laughs> that's that's Scott Conley. Uh, it cracked me up. He had he had the best time doing it. Obviously, he wasn't shy. You know, get out of here. They're oh, so man. aggressive. I didn't realize that. I didn't <laughs> like, realize that. Carrie and Carrie Ann and I would do all that work to get people ready, and then they would walk through. And apparently, um, apparently, <laughs> like you know, Scott would just alienate everybody and send them on their way, right? But yeah. that was funny. So we did that. I kid you not. We um, we did that at Pinewood Studios um in atlanta so you know the big studio down here they called me up um i, I think it was amario's art academy actually said you know they would they would love it if you could help us and so we helped amario and his group do um do their bit a little bit as well and we did ours there's my hat they were um, troopers by the way those kids were in those ninja suits with their faces covered with fog coming in and they couldn't oh. see very well, and they had masks on on top of that. And those kids were just like stellar little troopers. Yeah. And we we literally did um, we literally did um, I mean the fog machines were everywhere. We built an enchanted forest in the, over the course of maybe three days with some kid volunteers. It was so great for them because they got to see production, right? They got to see the idea, they got to see it built. We, we, you know, and they gave us a budget to do it and everything. It was really fun, right? And the kids got so much out of it. So these kids and Amara's Art, Amario's Art Academy, these kids are all from the inner city. They're from like East Point, Atlanta, right? And they don't have a lot of opportunities for art. And so Amario is this amazing guy and he helps basically give them, um, 
you know, an education in art and, and comic. He loves comics. So he does a lot of comic stuff. And so those kids came in and they got a chance to basically perform at Pinewood Studios, which was awesome, right? Uh, and then Carrie Ann and I just hammed it up, basically. <laughs> I, what I love is that I, I, at the time I did, I had pneumo a terrible case of pneumonia and like mm -hmm. I was right in front of the fog machine. Like literally it was basically blowing in my mouth. Yeah, so great. Yeah. Suffering for your art, but it was, so yeah, it was really. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And Pinewood's Pinewood's an incredible um, studio setup, anyway. But it was, and we had our friend Jeff Burdett who helped save the day with props. Yep, um, that was great. From yeah. you guys had to pay for all this, right? Yeah, we had um, to pay for it. We had to pay for it, like the whole thing, you know. But Pinewood gave us a budget for it as well, so that was all good. And you know, we had we had a ton of ton of fun, right? Like we enjoyed ourselves. We we. Uh, too much fun. <laughs> we had too much fun, right? We had way too much fun, and um, so we did our we did that. That's been a fairy quest thing. Another thing that we've got is the fairy quest um, uh, audio drama. That's basically we're building out, um, and I need to go find that, and I will put that up next because we are. This is one of our announcements that's coming. I may as well make it now, right? Because I don't really mind. <laughs> one of our so announcements. It's right now. Here it is. Yeah, here's our next announcement. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, put up the, um, the an animated drama. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pages of Fairy Quest, and we're going to we're going to bring up each panel, and we're going to go in between panels. And basically, we've recorded some of it. But we're going to kind of re-record the dialogue right now, um, and do an audio drama of our entire comic book. So people can basically get to see Fairy Quest played out with the actors doing the voiceovers and also just the panel by panel kind of interaction. Um, so we're going to do an animated drama and we figured that we're going to give our Kickstarter and Indiegogo people the first access to it so they can see it being creative. It's really cool. So we're actually going to do an audio drama as well. Uh, Cause you why not? Right? Cause you got loads of free time. Say what? So you can in the in the Kickstarter video you can hear a little, there's a little teeny slice of it in the beginning of the Kickstarter video. Yeah, Bill, can you do you have a second to play our Kickstarter? Oh, absolutely, video? absolutely. Yeah. Let's go there. Hang on. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, who are you say right. like somebody? Absolutely, absolutely. It's George Bush Senior. I think that sounded like absolutely <laughs> sure. All right, so hey, you went up. I, yeah, I, well, if, if you donated and you liked the pages, you got to tell us so I can put your name in the big fancy hat. Thank I you, think someone guys. just did up there. Someone did up there. And by the way, Sarah, Sarah's reminding me when we're finished, we'll tell you a little bit about a thing we're doing with the Mario's Art Academy. We're doing something that everybody can join in with. Okay, so I'm going to play this now, um, and uh, let's let's give it a whirl. Hang on a second. I am very, very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, Mr. Wolf. So the big bad wolf says, I am the big bad wolf, and I am very, very hungry. Oh, hello. Gordis and I are reading his favorite book. This is Fairy Quest. And we are about to reprint Fairy Quest 1 and Fairy Quest 2 here on Kickstarter where it all began. And we're also coming out with Fairy Quest 3. Billy, you're echoing, mate. We would love you guys to be part of our campaign. So we have planned a ton of extras and add-ons. That's weird. Lots of amazing swag that will add to every pledge as we're closing on our funding goals. We can't wait to bring you all kinds of exclusives and incentives that we'll announce if we're lucky enough to hit our stretch goals. And we have some special cover artists lined up. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm echoing because if I hit mute on myself, then you won't be able to hear it. I don't think. So if I maybe if I just lower the volume, that's Is weird. It playing in two places. It sounds like it's playing in two places. I have it on my computer. It's the PC, so I don't. You know, it's it's. I, I prefer my Macs. Sorry about that. Um, let me see if I lower my mic because if I if I mute myself, then it's not going to play. But let me lower my mic and see if that works because it's probably coming through my speakers and then coming through the, the other thing. So let me do that. Sorry, give me a second. 
I thought the echo was cool on the. Um, hang on, hang on. on the All right, give me a thumbs up because I can't hear you. I'm going to keep playing it though. Can you guys hear it? We have Billy Tucci of Sergeant Rock fame, and we have Kevin Eastman, the co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Fairy Quest 3 is the next chapter in the Fairy Quest saga, which is set in Fablewood, a giant forest where all of the stories live together, but they're divided by genre borders. We originally published the work here in the early days of Kickstarter. And after a long hiatus, I'm really thrilled that we're going to be bringing our book back here again. I know you're going to love the new 48 page chapter with a new main cover by Umberto Ramos. And this time we're welcoming the incredible Mike Bowden, as well as our fantabulous friend, Leo Olia, who's going to be doing all of the colors and all of the design and lettering on the book. Since our first Kickstarter, Fairy Quest has been translated into a number of languages. It's been a cool statue. We've seen live action. We've had a bunch of cosplay people come up as our characters. And we've even developed a live action version of it that we performed at Pinewood Studios in Atlanta. All of this comes down to the fans at Kickstarter. We can't do any of this without your help. Fair Request exists because of you. And now we're finally able to bring our beautiful book back into print. I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to finish it here where it all began. So thanks for watching our video. And thanks so much for helping us. Awesome. This is going to be okay. Let me do that one again. <laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 my my perfect wife. Um, so All right. I saw a, so let me uh, put my, my speaker back up. There you go. There you go. Sorry about that. So that's what it was. So I learned something excellent. Now I know what to do because I can't wear my headphones while I'm trying to draw though. So I have to have well, my the echo, on, the echo on the animated stuff in the beginning was kind of cool. I was like, Oh, I don't remember it sounding like that. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it was all my fault. I apologize, everyone. I'm a cartoonist. What am I going to do? <laughs> now, Paul, would you guys mind telling everyone the story of, of Fairy Quest? And basically, how did you come to 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 do this 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 whole new take on you know all on basically on fairy tales? Yeah, so I want to show I want to show people actually something that I think will probably um, uh, highlight it the best, right? So it comes from a premise of a project that I created called uh, Fablewood, right? And Fablewood is a world that I created where every story that's ever been told lives together in this giant forest, right? And all of the stories that are yet to be told are like the undiscovered parts of the forest. So you've got this place where you've got like science fiction and fantasy and, and, and all of these different genres, and they're divided by borders, right? Mm -hmm. And so you could have, you know, westerns or something, and then they'd be bordering up against horror, and no one ever crosses the border, but every so often people do. And so in the very first story, which is called Fiction Squad, um, there's a detective from the world of crime fiction, and he goes across to where the nursery rhymes are because he realizes they're all crime scenes, right? And um, and then he realizes, you know, Jack and Jill's a crime scene and Humpty Dumpty's a crime scene, and he starts investigating them, and it, and it all goes sideways, yeah? Um, and so I did that book with Ramon Bax, who is just – incredible he's just such a brilliant artist uh he and i did um we did civil war together nice. um and so let me show you uh actually let me let me do this so we'll, we'll go one by one i'll show you the original which is um this is fiction squad right uh, so now am i sharing this or you're sharing yeah. it yeah I'm, I'm sharing it so you just have to it. i see it, it. Yeah. i got it yeah i got it it, it, it was right. below so this is Fiction Squad. Uh, this is the last issue. And basically, the Queens and the Witches are the mob in the story. And they've gone to war. And now uh, this guy at the top, Frankie, is the cop. And his buddy cop partner is Simple Simon. So they've <laughs> given him, like he says, this is my partner, Simple Simon. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this is us running away. Lots of other people running away. So basically, we got to do this incredibly chaotic, hilarious story about you know, the queens and the witches basically being at war and uh, a, a detective from the world of detective fiction getting stuck in the middle, right? And 
so that was something that people like really loved you know i mean you can in fact what they do is they they find out that the the i don't want to get too many too much away but i guess we're getting there that they find out that jack is behind everything because jack is everybody he's in every story jack be nimble jack be quick jack the ripper jack oh. this jack that. there's jack everywhere in every genre and oh, so cool. you're right that all the jacks have come together and they want their piece they feel like they're second fiddle to the women right so is all of, all the jacks come from all the stories and and now you know this mess right there's uh, there's alice she's a lieutenant she's a conciliar for the for the witches uh, for the for the queens um, and there's the Queen of Hearts right there. So anyway, there's there's Fiction Squad, right? So what happened was that in that world, I talked with Umberto Ramos, and he and I used to do um, – we used to do um, Spider-Man together, and we had worked on this book, Revelations. And so Umberto and I decided that we would do this fairy tale story, Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. They live in the middle of the children's realm, and they are friends, but they're made to basically – they can't tell the story. They, they, you know, they, they, they love each other, and they're not supposed to be. And so they um, decide to escape, right? And uh, they run away along the yellow brick road to freedom. So let me give you sort of like – now I'll bring up another one here. Um, let, me, let me share my screen with some of this artwork. Here we go. Um, Got another share here, Bill. All right. Boom. Yeah. So these are the pages of, and I think I can probably spread them out a little bit. I'm not sure, but we'll give it a shot. How does that work? Yeah, here you go. You can see them a little bit better, right? Yep. Yep. So, so these are the pages of Fairy Quest. And as you can see, is you know, amazing. Isn't it beautiful? And, and I just want to point out, like, this is the colorist, Bill. You know, this guy, Leonardo, is the guy that we're getting to color the cover that you're doing. Jeez. And his stuff is good. His choices are brilliant. Like, Leo is such a great colorist. This They go, in this scene, they go and they find this girl called Punzel, and she's Rapunzel. And right. she, she's awful. She's terrible. And she traps them all. And she basically just wants friends to play with. And so she traps people in her castle. And... <laughs> And she's look. She's got all these like, because you know every children's story's got some darkness to it, and so she traps all these people that have been trapped up there for years, you know. And she just wants someone to play with, but she's like basically evil, right? Um, now is she? A, but but does she become a queen or a no? She, what you find is that the women in children's stories are always the most powerful. They're the ones. I mean, if you think about it, in children's stories, that's always true, right? The women are, are the the matriarchs and the powerful characters, right? And so, yeah. and so, Punzel's just mental, basically, and they they kind of get away. She, look at the banshee in the bottom right here. This is Punzel chasing after them, or even in the bottom panels, like she's just scary, right? And so, yes, <laughs> yes, she is. And then look at this man. They get away and they they travel across. And and I, I want to get to this last page. Uh, so this is the bad guy. He's chasing them. His name is Grim, and he's basically told all the animals of the forest, "You have to, you have to find them for me." And if you don't, like, so it's all like spies and people ratting on each other, and you know, it's all like a fascist environment, right? And then uh, look at that last page, man. I mean, I just pulled out a few select pages for you to see. Oh my gosh, this right? is. I remember when you were on the show the other night. We were. It just looks like a water. Every panel looks like a watercolor painting. It does, man. It does. And look it's what he does with look what Leo does. I'm not saying it's because you're my friend. I mean, I'm generally blown away. Yeah. It's beautiful. It. And the thing is, the story itself with the dialogue, just the way it comes out, it's a really honest yeah. story. It just like it's about a little girl and a wolf, but it's like everybody wants to read it. Look at look at what Leo does in this panel over here with using forced perspective and like blowing out the background and, de and the depth of field, you know. So you got leaves falling and you got them, so and then this stuff's all blown out of out of perspective, you know. It's the light that gets me, his use of light, yeah. you know, that, it, that it's amazing to me that anybody can take something two-dimensional and make it look so uh, real. Le like, Le yeah. Leo's a genius. I, I love I love his work, right? So he's he's incredible there. So, Bill, I'm going to share, share you some other stuff. Here's what's really cool. So around the world, you know, people over time, they would start sending us fair request art, right? So check out this page um, that I just shared with you. Um we got these people. Give me a second. 
Give me one second. Oh, and Stogie, um, Stogie just said that uh, that TJ James, I think you donated. Thank you. And oh, thank you, TJ. All right, TJ. Media. You get to be put in the hat. Um, yes, Captain Fine. I just had to take the dog to the bathroom. <laughs> you're, you're in there. <laughs> so you're in there, TJ. Thank you, TJ. We really appreciate you being part of what this book. So we've had people all over, right, that have done like artwork. This is Pam and T look, there's a Tinkerbell in this oh, one. I love that. It's oh, so, so fun, she's, right? uh, blue, But now what color is She's blue, Tinkerbell, right? Yeah, she's blue uh, in ours. I mean, she she's generally blue, you know. Um, does she have... um? Does she, does she have freckles or no? Uh, I sent your reference, man. Come on. I know, but I'm well. I don't have the reference open well, now. Had the reference. This, food, is, this is this is the truth of it, right? This is the truth of it. Like this is how much we actually pay attention to what we do. Not <laughs> that, to be fair. Um. Anyway, this is Jorge Monreal, a guy oh. from Spain. He did this really sweet one. Wow. Wow. Um. Because there's a big scene where Mr. Wolf never sleeps inside he only he'll sleep out in the rain and he always faces danger because he wants to protect red and that's because his vixen his wife and his cubs were killed by the same hunters that are in their story so he always sleeps facing danger so that he can protect her which is like oh you know um this one is bad right it was kind of like an yeah. anime style one yeah. i'm like this is great right <laughs> and check this some out. great fans check that one out yeah, that one's awesome. Wow. That's Martin Ayala. Are these gonna, now, can these appear in the comic at all? Or will you ever consider Mate, making prints of any of them or anything? Uh, the answer to that is yes, they are going to be. That's the point. Is we're, we're about to do a bunch of stretch goals once we hit our level, and we want to make all of these available to people. Um, we've got all of those images, right? So let me stop sharing and share one more thing um, because this one is basically like where we're at right now. Um, let me just share. Here you go. So we're sharing some of the things that we've got going on. Um, here you go. Let me know when uh, we're up. Friend Robert. Hello, Rod Rodney. Sorry, Rod Rodney. Hello, Rodney. Hello, Rodney. Good to see you, my friend. Aren't they? All right. So I got one more share for you, Bill, if you can uh, put me on There's another there. thing here. that That's what needs to be a trading card. You should do trading cards. Yeah, I think we're going to. We I don't. I, I don't know how to price them. Can you share this last screen with me, Matt? I'm going to show the, Absolutely. the covers that we got. All right. So here is Ali Garza's uh, first uh, cover, right? Um, look at that. Gosh. So all of these are going on the front of the book. This is the sketch for Ali Garza's second cover, and it's actually a really cool part of our story, right? So, so the thing about this is there's a couple of characters, and they're called the Mouse and the Clockmaker. And they have a story that's been forgotten. So they seem like familiar, like the story. You feel like you should know the mouse and the clockmaker as like a little children's fairy tale. But, you know, it's one that we made up. But the idea is it feels like it should be one that we know. And so what's happened is that people have stopped telling their story and now they're forgotten. Right. And right. now they, they, they so they go to live in the caves under the world because their story is over and no one can remember them anymore. So it's really tragic that these two characters. Yeah. Are yeah, it's really sad. Um, and then here is Umberto's uh, cover to book three, which is just awesome. Uh, I, mean, I, love, I love it how the uh, the the production. Not that I mean, I have a copy. You you great. So you gave me a copy of it in Chicago. Yeah. We were hanging out a few years back. But looking at the new issue too, it just seems that it's just getting better every issue. Yeah, yeah, I think My so. God. It's so beautiful. And and so here's Jennifer's. I'll just show you again. This is Jennifer's cover that she did. Um, here is Mike Bowden's new cover. It's crazy. I love wow. it. It's crazy. And so they go into Wonderland and they find that the place is just completely blown up. Like it is not because they're not telling this. It's like anarchy down there. Right. And so they're not telling their story properly and it's all falling apart. And the, this book is called Over, Under, and Through. They go over the world, they go under through Wonderland, and they get through and they find their first genre border, and they realize, wait a minute, and they start becoming self-aware, and they go into the, the next realm, and they realize it's like, you know, crime. It's basically crime. They go into the crime realm and realize, wow, we're not the only type of story, you know? So it's this really cool journey and procession through, through storytelling, 
Um, but this is, look at his Cheshire cat, and especially I like this guy. I think his caterpillar wow. is amazing, <laughs> right? And then, that, you know, look, I mean, we just have artwork like this flying around all over the place. This is an original Umberto one that we oh, did wow. this ago. We never even used it. That's beautiful. Yeah, because what could help is that you could, now that you have, you know, say you could do it with your stretch goals. If you guys make, once you make 40, then you go for, say, 45. If you get yep. 45, everyone gets that Umberto Ramos yep. trading card right there. Or one of the, I love the idea that you have the, this glorious art from people that just love your book from these artists all over the world. Yep. You know, those could also be another type of stretch goal. And then you could use that stretch goal when you guys go Indiegogo too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, so, and cards aren't that much money. Well, don't do silver metallic trading cards like I did. <laughs> like everyone gets it for every twenty five hundred dollars, everyone gets a silver metallic trading card, and then we realize they cost like a dollar each to make. Yeah, and we have thirty five hundred backers, so we should we yeah. lost money on them. But you just do yeah. regular. Yeah. Kevin, he just donated. He saw the number go up. So make sure if you're donating that you comment here in the chat so that we know that you donated and that you shared everything and we can check for you. Yeah, I just want to see. Let's. All right. Yeah. 37503. Okay. Good job, oh, Kevin. God. Thank you. Thank um, you. Kevin. We don't know who it was. We don't know who it was that donated, but Kevin caught it. So if, if you donated and you're on our stream, let us know. Yeah. I heard the sirens too. <laughs> that's why yeah, that's, we have a um it's because the we, artwork is too no, hot we, yeah it's hot it's hot no we have in this town of mine that i, I guess it's all over oh. long island we have these civil defense alarms still and fire alarms even though and that's a fire alarm so even though you'll see the firemen the volunteer firemen driving racing down you know what i mean with that little blue lights going to the firehouse a minute later you'll hear the fire alarm go off so it's so an antiquated and it was weird when I bought my house 23 years ago. They never let me come come over, you know, around 12 o'clock noon because it also goes up every 12 o'clock noon, oh, except for on Sundays. So Rod, it's, it's, it's just dumb. Really quickly, Rodney said, Rodney, you said you donated. Did you also share and like the pages? Are we putting your name in the hat? Yeah, right. Tell Rodney again what to do quickly. Now yeah. you've done the hard um, so, Rodney, so Rodney, you donated, which is awesome. Now, now, in order to get your name put in this big frilly pink hat <laughs> of surprise, um, share the Kickstarter on your social media, and then also go and like the Fablewood pages and the, Met, the Fablewood page and the Meta Studios page. If you're Stogie. on Facebook, it, yeah, Stogie. Stogie put it up, yeah. comments. Yep. And can check that, but yeah, just let us know if you when you when you donate, let us know. And once you do the sharing and the liking of the other pages, let us know because otherwise, I don't know to put you in the hat or not. So, all right, so no. hey, Billy, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you this one thing, right? So, you know, Night Perfect and I go through quite a lot of trials, and about um. 12, 13 years ago, our house was destroyed by a tornado, right? Oh, right. Because, of, because, of course, it was, it's pretty much par for my life. And our firstborn child, Jack, was only six weeks old at the time. And we were new parents. So we had we were completely sleep deprived and we didn't know what to do. And um, hold on one second. Rodney asks, which pages again? Stogie, yeah. could you do us a favor out there? Can you um, post the Facebook pages for us if you have them? The favor yeah. word. Be, yeah, or at, carry on, maybe you can. Yeah, I can't post anything, but it's, it's at. Um uh, Stogie, it's okay. You don't have the admin on Fablewood. You can still see. You can just click and see who likes the page. The who who liked the pages, but the pages are. Um, oh, somebody just put them up. Her Her yeah, Her Her did it. Okay. Thank anyway, you, Her so, Her so so our house gets messed up. We you know, and the way it came down was that they they sort of I don't know I don't know if we were paying attention, but we were sleep deprived and we got a six week old kids. So we're like. Uh, so I tend to go to bed at four o'clock in the morning and my wife, Melinda, she was up front with the baby, right? So she slept in the front room and, uh, and I went to bed at four and I looked at the windows and I thought, man, this, this is, you know, it's really dark outside. And we had a tornado siren 50 yards from our house and we didn't hear it. Do you want to know why we didn't hear the damn tornado siren? Why? There was a tornado going off. And yeah, yeah. It was really loud. <laughs> you know, I have a story which is not as tragic as yours or sad that you, you 
<clears throat> got hit by one. But a few years back, man, go back a decade or more. Yeah, because my son William was a newborn. So going back 18 years, 17 years ago, there was a huge blackout in the Northeast. The whole Northeast was blacked out. There was a big power grid shut down, everything. And wouldn't you know it that, um, you know, there was no electricity, no power, nothing. And wouldn't you know it that that once the power went back on, our civil defense thing went on at four o'clock in the morning. So when the power went on, that went on. And it woke and scared the hell because it's that's probably in the park right there in the woods. It's probably 200 feet away from my house, 300 feet away. And it, it just, and it was in the summer. So the windows are all open. Oh my God. I'll, I'll tell you how, how crazy it is to be in a tornado, right? So I, I drop off to sleep. I'm, no, I don't drop off. I kind of get into bed and, and I can only ever sleep when I'm exhausted, right? So I'm tired enough and I start drifting off and I look at the window and I'm thinking, wow, that's a bad storm. And all of a sudden a tree comes through the ceiling and, and literally the branches hit me in the head. <laughs> and and I'm like, I think I know what just happened. And the next thing I know, I'm downstairs in the basement, and we've got the six week old baby, the the three dogs, and the one cat, right, called Mister Quimby. He was a great cat. And it was the first night that our kids slept through the night, and we are in the stairwell below in the basement, and our house is being destroyed above us. Right? Holy crap! And, it was so crazy, and there were two things that happened in that tornado. Number one was in the morning I woke, I got outside once it passed, and like little pieces of grass or hay had come sideways and stuck in the side of the house. And you figure they would be crushed. They're just little pieces of hay, and they were stuck in the side of the house. So I don't know what the forces were that did that, but like you figure that the hay would crumple, and it didn't. It got stuck. And then you're like missiles. Yeah, it was like missiles. And then you would touch it and it would bend just like you figured. And you're like, how did it not get destroyed? Right. And the second thing that was great was that in the middle of what this mayhem, I realized I'd left my pet rat upstairs. And so my wife is flipping out. She's like, you're not getting the rat. And I said, it's not fair. He's my rat. I want to go get him. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the moment where you work out if you're in battle, would you run or would you go and do so? I figure I'm the guy that would do so because I go, I'm getting my rat. Yeah. So I go upstairs and I get my rat. And he's really, his name was Reggie. And he's really scared. And he bit me on the finger because no act of kindness goes unpunished. And then I ran downstairs with my little rat and my wife was so mad at me for weeks. She was like, you could have died. You realize we have a six week old baby. And I'm like, yeah, I just, I wasn't really thinking. <laughs> my rat. Rat. Oh, I thought you were going to say that Mr. Jingles, whatever the cat's name, then killed the rat. Oh no, Quimby. No, Quimby didn't Quimby was Quimby. bored in the basement. He's like, oh, Quimby, look at that. Quimby, and the, Quimby and the baby went to sleep and they didn't wake up throughout the entire tornado. It's the loudest sound I've ever heard in my life. And then he said, hey, you know, I want to do a comic book about – let's do a comic book about Dorothy. That's right. So we drove we, we, <laughs> and it, and it, So I did a thing, and I actually got – so in the morning, we get upstairs, and we look up. We can kind of climb up to the top of the stairs. It's all smashed up. And we find Melinda's closet, and a tree has come all the way through it. And she stands there, and she makes this little meeping sound like, oh, because everything My is My shoes. <laughs> Everything, but she had this pair of red glittery pumps, right? And so I took him, I took him downstairs and I put him underneath the house and I took a photo. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, she never appreciates my sense of humor. What can I say? Right. That's good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm I am going to uh pop pop over say to wash my hands. Yeah, so do it, man. Do it. It's hard, very clean because I'm using the the, the barrels and this, I'm using a two B. I've had this pencil. This pencil has drawn every single comic I've ever drawn. I've had it since college. I might have had it since high school. That's awesome, the man. Or whatever it is, it's a. Uh, oh, this is an Alvin Tech Deluxe from Italy. 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 Look at that. You see how it's worn and everything. Uh, let me. But talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, we will, man. Yeah. All right. It looks like we've got carry on. It looks like we got a couple of Rodney put in. So well done. Yeah, I got Rodney in already. Rodney's in, right? Have we got anyone yeah. else on the stream that, that has added in? TJ James put in, right? Yeah, I put TJ in. I put TJ in and I put Rodney in. All right, excellent. Is there anyone else on our stream right now who has put in that hasn't told us yet so that we can make sure that you go into the, yeah, the tell us at some point soon we got to draw a name. 
yeah, we're going to draw it in a minute before we get off the air. But we're we're uh, we're having fun and we're we're showing Billy drawing his artwork, so it's great. Yeah, I love <laughs> I love I love his version of Tinkerbell. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant, right? It's Are they going to do a nine-hour stream to sell it? No, <laughs> a nine-hour no. stream with sock puppets. It starts yeah, right. starring, you know, like. Well, we we are getting close, right? Like we're we're two and a half thousand dollars away from our thing, and so we're closing <laughs> it. Uh, who wants to get in the pink hat? Because I think we have to do that drawing in a little while. Yeah, we do. Because I think I think. Well, I don't know. It depends on. I don't know how long we're gonna be here. No, I'm here for a while. I don't know if we'll be here when I finish the whole thing. I'll finish the whole thing today. Yeah, but I don't know if you want to sit here and have people watch. But it's coming along. If I can pop it in real quick. Somebody asked if I was the editor. No, I'm not the editor. I just work for Meta. <laughs> throw it in. Throw it in, Bill. Let's see it. All right. Let me see. Now, the angle of the camera's off, so she looks kind of weird. But uh, let me let me pop it in. So this cover, guys. Oh, I love her. She's coming. She's cute. Yeah. I got to fix that. I got to see that. I, it, it's interesting. When I look at it on the camera, then I could see it. But it's more like, see, the camera's really off. I can't get the angle right exactly, but you, you guys will be able to. Oh see yeah, it, but... she reminds, she looks a little bit like a nineteen sixties. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to do, and then of course underneath it is the the rough that everyone will be getting as well. Yeah, so Kevin I'm... Kevin asked if there's a PayPal Stogie. Um, why don't we try and find a way for Kevin to be able to do it? Because uh, Kevin, are you? Uh, this is quite interesting. Are you unable to do a Kickstarter or something? Is it is it harder there? Because we know how to do the PayPal, um, let's, but let's we, we try not to go. We're trying not to go outside Kickstarter because obviously uh, you, want to, you know. Well, yeah. they don't know. No, I realize <laughs> that. I, it's it's more like um, it's important, right? That. Like for sustainability, Bill, and you, you got to admit to this. Like, if you want to sustain it, then you need to have a good relationship with your publisher, right? Right. right. And so, we want to keep a good relationship with Kickstarter and with Indiegogo. We want to do that, and so it's a bit difficult for us to go outside of them. But we understand if somebody can't, yeah, like Kevin says, that, that if you're in Belgium and they won't let you be on it, oh, which is okay. weird. Um. Kevin, the question is, do Indiegogo accept your debit card? That's going to be an interesting question. You might as well I'll answer it. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, but Kevin is donating through PayPal, and we're, are we putting him in the hat? I'm confused. Yeah, i tell you what we can do. We can do this. We're going to do a – let's see. Um, let's see how we're going to – I know what. Kevin – First thing you can do is message us right now. We'll get this done before Carrie Ann draws. I know how to do this. Yeah, because maybe Kevin can um, – I'm going to remove myself, but maybe he could PayPal yep. one of you who have a, a private – you know, That's right. Your account, and then you can just we, – We can just donate to – And then you donate to it, yeah, and then you know that. All right, Kevin, so here's what we're going to do. Um, you can go to my um, – my Facebook account, right? Because we want everybody to have a chance to be in on this drawing, right? And we also want everybody to have a chance to 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 do the thing. So why don't you come on my Facebook um, and I will post that somewhere. Let me see. How can I do this? You can message me here. Edit. I think it's this. I think it's this one. Hold on. Or Paul, you can link it to, oh, I don't know. I was going to say you could send it to Stogie and Stogie could put it in the chat for him. Yeah. Stogie, here you go. Sending it to you, Stog. Uh, he said, yeah, Kevin's asking for a link to your Facebook page. Yeah, so I'm going to send it to Stogie, who's going to put it up. Stogie, it's in Slack. All right, we're going to, this is, this is like literally a mystery, Kevin. We're going to see if we have the intelligence between all of us to actually get you in this hat. Okay, well, right. your, your name has been written on the paper, so. Right. So there you go. So we got that. And Stogie's about to, with all going well, Stogie's about to put you up a link. And that link is going to be your, right? Right? Hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to go to Facebook, too, because I think we're streaming live on Facebook. Yeah, if you... Um... There's a lot of people watch on Facebook, which I got to do. Yeah, I can, put, I can put mine. Here you go. Uh, Billy, here you go. 
I can put my Facebook page right there. There you go. Okay. Oh, you sent me private chat. Sorry. Hang on. Yeah, you <laughs> oh, mine. Oh, thanks, Kevin. I love I love how not not too smart people are really trying to solve a problem here. And it's it's not going well so far, Kevin, to be quite honest. Does Meta have an email address that we can PayPal to? Here's the thing. If I'm not mistaken, Meta, Meta has an okay, so you sent us a message. All right, here we go. Kevin sent me a message. It's Herrenberg, you are right and you are very intelligent, but we weren't that intelligent. And so we didn't have a Meta Studios PayPal account, which we really should have, but we're not smart enough. Okay, let's try this. Um, yeah, and you get a lot of comments on Facebook and I missed them all. Sorry, let me just add that. Hi, oh, no. How do okay. you see is it on Facebook? Yep, we got, uh, we got John Velarde. Hey, John Velarde, Ryan Kincaid, David Olbrick, of course, is there. He's saying hello to everyone, but I guess he got in. Uh, I think I missed some because I'm only at one. Yeah, because we if, yeah. if people are on Facebook and they've already donated and 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 done that thing, we want to make sure that we put uh, we want to put them in the hat. Yeah, well, I'm. I'm no one's saying that they that they uh, paid into it though. Billy, how do you see comments on Facebook? Like, it doesn't show up. Yeah, you got to go to my Facebook page, or you have to go to the Pop XP Facebook page. Okay, because I don't see it. Scroll there. by. It's it's tough. Facebook's weird like that because you could miss them. They're not like this where you can go back in time. You know, yeah, I can pop all the way up to you know to this from a while ago. Yeah, uh, I'm Facebook it kind of disappears unless you pop in on it, and I don't really want to pop in on it because then my the the sound will go on and it's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, I. Okay. I'll keep looking now. I'll I'll, I'll keep paying attention. I feel I feel for Kevin right now, who's just trying to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin, your name is in the hat. Here's okay. what we're gonna do, Kevin. Here's what we're gonna do, and I think this is fair, right? We're gonna go on the honor system because you're gonna love the books anyway. I promise you, right? So we're gonna go on the honor system with Kevin only. Don't all do this, please. Kevin, you're in the hat. We'll work it out after the show. All right, we'll write back to you because I can't even find your message that you sent to me, and that's not your fault. That's my fault because I do not know where those messages go live. I, I have this problem every time, don't you? There might be, Paul, there's an, like an other folder. It depends on where he, where he messaged you. I know, I know. And I'm just sort of like, oh, please. I'm, ugh. You got to anyway. send a friend request. Be friends with him so you could see the messages because there is that other folder. If I, if I could see him, I would, right? Uh, if, if I could see him, I would do that. Post a link not. to your Facebook page, Kevin. Here, if you if you, you you're oh, on Facebook, you right? And then Paul will find that. Paul will cut cut and paste that into his thing, and he'll friend you, and then you'll be able to get messages. There you go. We're getting there because there's only seventeen thousand Kevin Cruises around, and you know, someone's about to get a message from me and go, "Who's that guy?" And why is he asking me for money? Why yeah, is he? Yeah, yeah, why is it? <laughs> Actually, there's there's a Kevin Cruise here in Atlanta, Georgia, which is interesting. So, uh, you know, we're in we're in. Stogie, um, I think poor Kevin. Um, Stogie, poor Kevin. Can you just put a link up for Kevin, and then can you guys friend each other on Facebook and message each other so that so that like people can talk to people. <laughs> okay, so as as we all know, right, this is as dumb as hell because we're anyway, Kevin, okay. Kevin yeah. you're you're in the hat. So Carrie Ann, I do think that we should probably do a drum roll and. Let's announce, and then Kevin's about to be disappointed because it wasn't him. Sorry, mate, but you're going to get really good books, I promise, right? Um, you never know. All right, Carrie Ann. Yeah. How are you uh, going to do I this? Full screen, Carrie Ann? Yeah, sure. go on. Okay. So I have to show you, Rune has decided to come over, but only that far. Yeah. So he's he, he's hanging out. Um, all right, so there's six people in the hat right now. So you guys have a one in six chance. Anybody wants in on the hat? You've got ten seconds. Well, I, I'm just gonna shake it. <laughs> it's shaking, bacon. I hope. <laughs> shaking, bake. All right, so it's all like that, and now I'm just gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick one. Who's it gonna be? I'm excited. I'm nervous for all of you doing at home, sitting on the edges of your seats, wondering how long I'm gonna talk before I actually pull one. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. All right. I got it. Ready? Who is it? Who the winner? Who the winner? It's Rodney. 
Hey, Rodney, Rodney. got in. Rodney. Yeah. All right. Rodney. But here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do, Carrie Ann. You gonna draw another name? No, we're going to we're oh, going totally. all of the people that are in there, right? We're gonna send them an extra special gift on top of it anyway. Oh, so yeah. the other five people, we're gonna send you something uh that you're gonna really love just because you're in the hat. And we really appreciate you guys backing us. Thank um you. so I'll send you. I'll send you or Stogie, whoever you want me to send. I'll send you the, the list of people. I'll yeah, get send me the list, and the other five people uh, who are in the hat are going to get a special gift from us. Something extra. Don't know what it is yet because I've got loads of options. And because Stogie and I were on last night trying to work out what we're going to make, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we got other stuff. So here's the deal: Rodney gets uh, the extra stuff. Rodney, what does Rodney win? Because Rodney's already pledged. Okay, what does Rodney win? Uh, he's supposed to, what Rodney is supposed to win because he donated is the complete set with collector covers. Wow. Wow. That's, that's right. Yeah, he already donated. So he gets the complete set with – that's right. That's awesome, right? Yeah. You get the complete set, Rodney. That's pretty cool. And they're all the collector covers. So that's brilliant, right? Um, and then and – then for everybody else, really quick, just so that I make sure that nobody is lost in the shuffle of this, because some of the people, three of the people are friends of mine, and I, I can get their addresses and things like that. <gasps> Hello. Um, Hello. But there's a couple of other people that came in, um, TJ, and, well, you have, because they donated, so you guys have their information, so I can just give you their oh, name. Never mind. We're good. I'll get, I'll get um, the ones on my Facebook page from oh, earlier. Yeah. We're in the just share and you get in the hat camp. So I'll get their addresses and stuff for you. Slight slight problem in the Jenkins household. My kid my kid just came up to me and he went, Dad, why is the Christmas elf here? So he's found the elf on a shelf and now he's like, Why is it here? And now it's I'm gonna July. To... It's Christmas in July, duh. Yeah, Christmas Christmas in July. July. I'm gonna have to come up, I'm gonna have to come up with some bullshit right now. <laughs> How old was he? Paul, he's <laughs> on him to make sure that he's behaving it's the mid-year checkpoint it's yeah mid -year checkpoint. that makes yeah. complete sense it makes perfect sense yeah he's probably found it in the back of a cupboard somewhere and now he wants to know why there's an elf in the thing and i'm like i don't know he's drinking a little too much he came to do the checkpoint he got into the schnapps he fell asleep oh, he, in the i wonder where my i wonder where my booze went that yeah. elf man you my know? wife is my wife is mental with that by the way she does things like zip lines and like climbing endeavors and She'll spend three hours trying to put it on a chandelier that we can't reach, and then we can't get the bloody thing down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate, I hate the elf on a shelf, but oh well, you know what can you do? Um, well, I'm really excited, right? Because Rodney, I really appreciate you backing us. Kevin, I appreciate you backing us. We'll get you your, we'll get you your connection. You're going to connect to Stogie, and uh, we'll get you that. You come and back us, and we're going to get you an extra special gift along with all the other four people in there as well. Yeah, and, um, uh, TJ on the stream, it's uh, Rodney one, and then TJ on the stream, and Kevin on the stream, yep. and then we had um, Jessica, Kat, and Sybil from my Facebook page. Yeah, the elf checked in during the pandemic. Exactly right. That's what it is. I mean, all bet for all. Passport isn't any good. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, they're not going to let him back. Now he's going to have to do two weeks of quarantine. No, don't no tell him that because then he'll be like, Christmas is going to be ruined because the elf can't report back to Santa. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, we're killing it. Uh, <laughs> the elf doesn't get his passport back. That's right. Oh, I love it. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting there. We had such a good bump over the last couple of days. Um, Billy, I'm going to put your rough up. And yeah. we'll do that as a one backer kind of thing. So we'll put the rough up and we'll show everybody uh, uh, what it is. We got, we got $2,500 to go. Um, once we hit our thing, we've got uh, a new couple of presents for everybody that everyone gets. We've got the metallic bookmarks. We have got the audio drama that everybody gets behind the scenes access to, we have a bunch of other stretch things. So now we're going to go to new products. And of course, I might as well be pretty clear. We're going to be putting Jennifer Meyer's incredible artwork up as a print. Yay. But nice. really, I think the one thing that I really want to kind of look at is, um, um, I really, Kevin's asking about the last eight hours. Kevin, we got nine, I don't know if you're reading it wrong. We got nine days to go, not nine hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we're clear. Yeah. Now, will you get another day back because of the problems Kickstarter had? Will they give you an extra day? 
I don't know, man. I don't know. Because that's um, not really right. That's not, that sucks that the, the whole website went down. And if you've yeah, got a campaign going, that could be devastating. For, what if that's your last day? Yeah, I think if it, if it was your last day, that would be sad, wouldn't it? That would be really frustrating yeah. to anybody that, you know, they probably would write to Kickstarter and say, yeah, man, you took hours away. Can we please have them back, you know? Um, so, yeah, so we, we have nine days to go, which is great. I think the good thing for us is if we can just get across this hump and get to our pledged number, what we can then do is start going, okay, everybody's going to get this. And, and the last one that we're definitely going to put up, we're going to put up an 8 by 10 print, like a high-quality print of Jennifer Meyer's um, – image because it's so great and people love it so much um but bill i think what we're going to be looking at you know there are some things we want to do with indiegogo too obviously but i think we're going to look at those cards man because i think those those collectible cards we have so much beautiful art that it's almost impossible not to put that stuff on cards you know yeah, it's so yeah. Great and, and there's so many printers if you can't find a local printer i know i have printers yeah you know? yeah and you should really really look into it um, Let me let me ask you a question, right? Like of all the <laughs> products, of all the products that you've done, Bill, what's what's your what? You know, I I need I need like ideas, right? You know, like we we went through it, Stoggy and I last night. We went through like metallic things. I really like the greeting card one. We're going to definitely do that because we think that's a really cool one, right? Yeah, and, that's and again, good. it's something that it's something that we can print and send in the package where we don't have to like change the way the package looks right especially if, yeah. blank, um, especially if they're blank inside too or they just have a quote or something so they can be used for any you know any occasion yeah we're going to do that yeah they're going to be blank inside and or whatever because I, I think it's a bad idea to say happy christmas or happy holidays or something like that it yeah. just kind of messes it up because then someone might want to send it i love you right um um glitch says the she metallic shiny trading cards were amazing whoa oh, how many of those did you do we did nine of them Okay. Silver metallic, super expensive though. I um Yeah, it, super expensive, the right? Purpose of having your strips go when the cards cost more. Yeah. But, you, you know, but that that I guess that's what makes them more collectible because going forward with our next campaign, we're just gonna do regular trading cards. Yeah, I see, this, gonna, I see this challenge yeah. coin thing as well. Like I I Oh yeah, we got beautiful challenge coins. Look at these. I'll let me see them. Hard. Show them, man. It's also some cool things like we did. Uh, sorry, I forget. Here's some of my stretch goals. The other ones are all kind of packed up, but we did a patch. Yeah, we know we can do those. Those are good, right? Gucci Trooper patch. Nice. Um, and then a friend of mine just made me these, uh, and we're going to put these in the mystery packs. Oh, okay. Right. Can you make yourself bigger so we can? Yes, I'll do that. I apologize. Let's yeah. let me do that. I'm going to do. They're tiny. The table. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do the table large. All right. Table large okay. Ones. So then we have we we have, we're gonna give these away in our mystery pack. But look how cool these things are. Yeah. Um, your poker chips. Yep. So uh, and I can put you in touch with Debbie. Great. So, yeah, she'll she'll hook you up. And I sign these. There's only I think 50 of them, and those go in the in the mystery packs. But okay. These, dude, look at these challenge coins. Check this out. So they come in these. Oh, those are nice. Yeah. You know, and it's our 25th anniversary sheet, 25th anniversary challenge coin. Take it out because I never took it out. What is a challenge coin? When you're in the service, um, when you're in your unit, uh, they give you some. Now everyone seems to do it, but it, it was a real airborne thing. It seems that we would, our first sergeant would give you, and your your company commander would would give you a challenge coin with the unit, a special unit challenge coin. Let me grab one from something. So. Hang on. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone, folks. That, that, yeah. that dead air that you hear is the sound of Billy losing something in the background. No, so, no, no. Get a challenge coin. He's getting a challenge coin. We'll give you the play-by-play. -play. As you can see, this is the form of uh, – As on, on camera, you can see the form of uh, our Tinkerbell. She's, um, yeah, she's right. getting drawn, Tinkerbell. Look See? at the state of that. Isn't that beautiful? So here's a challenge coin. This is my friend of the general gave this to me. Yeah. And now generals do it. But they used to be just small coins. And when you'd walk into a bar, um, I have mine, but mine's in like my little box with my with my little shadow box. But you walk into a bar and you throw this on the bar. You slam it on the bar. And if there's another military person, they usually army if it was, or now everyone's doing it. If they don't have their challenge coin to, to answer it with theirs – 
then they have to buy you a beer. That's yeah. great. If they have it, you got to buy them a beer because you put the yeah. challenge out. So it's fun. It's a drink thing. I so I you know Brian Polito does them. Uh, we've been doing them from the very beginning with our first campaign. But here's our sheet, 25th anniversary one. It's kind of tough with the light, but it's really yeah, gorgeous. Did. And then we did this one, which is uh, the Tucci Trooper one, the Crusade Comics one for our yeah. 25th anniversary. And th this is all on our campaign, which is on Indiegogo right now. If somebody wants to share my Indiegogo, because we're just shy of 115 grand. I think I'm like 60 bucks shy of 115 grand on Indiegogo. But look how beautiful these are. I got to put it lower. Yeah. Yeah, those are great. And then it's got my little Crusade logo. The challenge mm -hmm. coins are awesome. Like, you know, do a Fairy Quest challenge coin. And again, I can put you in touch with Debbie, and she'll she'll hook you up with Debbie. Debbie, Debbie perfect. Yeah, because we. Uh, it's just a fun, cool perk. It's a really fun, cool perk. Yeah, we like it, man. Like we we want people to feel like what we do. Uh, so a couple of the things that we're doing with the deluxe editions, for example, we use um, like a, a wax thing, so you can get a wax seal that's unique to Fairy Quest in it, oh, and then we can idea. emboss the corner. Um, so there's certain things that we we love and that we want to do, um, but I oh, love sorry. the challenge coming. Silent, go smaller. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, we love the challenge coin. We love some of these other things. We're going to definitely do the metallic bookmarks. I think the one thing that I'm learning is that people really like these. People really like these um, these trading cards, right? That's the big thing. Like giving them the cards, they love those things, right? Is that what you got the best you it, Yeah, because you make it a collectible. Yep. And there are people that just want to collect cards. So they're like, oh, I'll get that book too. Why not? Because yeah. they, they, you know, there was this guy, Mike. And he passed away. Uh, it sucks. He lost lost like four really good um, fans who became friends in mm -hmm. the past two years. Yeah. And um, he was called a collector. And he had thousands, I don't know, 100,000 trading cards signed. I know that guy. I know yeah, that guy. The passed, yeah, well, yeah. He, Mike, the collector, him and his brother Bill would come around. That guy's dead? That guy he died? He died. Yeah, he passed oh, away. Yeah. You know exactly. He had, a, he had white hair and like a goatee. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, uh, f f why am I Philbin or something? Why am I drawing oh, a blank? Wow, that guy was a good dude. That guy used to come and see me at every show, man. That guy yep. would come yep. up. Hey, it's me, the collector. You remember me? And I say, I always do, man. I always yep. know you. I had my friend John who would bring me a, a bring me knives. I mean, I have one up here. Every show he'd bring me a knife. Um, and he would just and give Debbie's throwing stars and stuff like that. Like <laughs> Um, and 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 he and I was at um, Heroes Con. And I met his daughter last year. No, not Heroes. Uh, the the um, South Carolina Con. And you guys should do that show. That is a great show. That's where I'm from. I'm from South Carolina. What? This is in Green Greensboro. Okay. Right? Well, oh, Greenville. 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 Yeah. Greenville. Yeah. Greenville is where my dad was born in Greenville, and that's where um, my grandfather was from. And I'm from Columbia. Oh, if you're going to say it properly, it's Greenville. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, it's Greenville. Kevin's asked this question two or three times. Oh, let me okay. see. I'm sorry. Hang on, Kevin. Hang no, on. No, he says, hey, Paul, would you let other teams work on Fablewood stories outside of Fairy Quest? Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, that's oh. cool, man. Um, it's it's. I haven't thought about it. Um, I suppose I would always say anyone that ever wants to do any kind of fan fiction and stuff like that, sure, I'd love to see it, right? We One thing that's really cool about Fablewood is we get a lot of people coming up in cosplay and they kind of go, hey, I came as Red as Red and Mr. Wolf or, or you know, I came as these characters, right? Um, what we're going to do at Meta is we're about to go back and reprint Fiction Squad, um, which is a, you know, you saw that book at the beginning of the stream. That's really cool. Um, and then, you know, we're going to go do the next one in F in Fablewood is actually the story of a woman from the world of um, romance fiction. And her job is to be a cover model. And so she's all loving and everything's about love. And they send, her to, the they, they send her to the world of horror stories as an ambassador. So she has to go away from romance and go to the world of horror. Now, is yeah. that like romance novels or? The yeah, romance. romance. So she comes to the world of romance fiction. And her job is to be a cover model on the front, right? And then they send her to the world of horror stories. Terrible. And she, just, and she just hates it. But then she realizes, hang on a minute, this is just people doing their job. It's just, it's all about like cultural difference, you know? Yeah. Um, and we'll yeah. always use the. Here we go again. 
TJ James, look at this. I have been known to bring scotch as a gift, and he has. There you go. Um, th there are some shows that we have that I highly recommend you guys go to um, if you want to have a good old drink with us. Yep. One is South Carolina Con. The yep. other is Baltimore Comic Con. Yep. Um, uh, what else? We, Dragon listen, Con. We had a great time at Dragon Con. We're huh? really high on Dragon Con because Dragon Con is it, man. Dragon Con is all the fun you ever want to have. Dress up in costume, have a bunch of fun, drink heavily at night. And my favorite part is is that everyone gets – sorry, I don't mean to be too off color, but after about 8 or 9 o'clock, everyone gets really sexed up at Dragon Con after 9 o'clock. It's brilliant. What, and like sexy angels and sexy elves and stuff just like that? Everyone in costume, everyone gets really sexed up. They're all like doing the thing. So it's it's great. Thanks, the Splintering, for coming by and seeing us. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, what's up, Splintering? Thank good to see you. Thank you so much. All right. That's yeah, fun. well, Kevin, you can always write a story, man, and just get it out there. We love fan fiction and stuff like that. And I think, you know, if you're writing comics and you want to, you want to give it a shot, I don't think that we're like at the moment, we need to get through publishing what we're doing. We're not, we're not going to be publishing anybody else's stuff because it's, it's really hard to do, but you certainly uh, always have the opportunity to write up some fan fiction and kind of put it out in the world. We love that. Uh, what sort of stop Kevin from making his own comic book? Yeah, absolutely. Right. We, we always encourage people to make their stuff, you know, do your own book, Kevin. We, I talked to you about that. The last, you know, I mentioned that the last yeah. time, do your own comics. This is a, there's never been a better time to, to yep. publish your own stuff. Even if you just do it digitally. Yeah. I think if we, or a PDF, I think if you see what's happening with those of us who've been sort of, you know, doing this for a while, you're seeing us at Kickstarter. You're seeing us kind of doing our thing and getting getting our, our fan bases back to us, right? Because, you know, Kevin, I, I, I've, uh, Bill, sorry, I, I feel like you probably agree with me. Like, we're kind of doing, um, you know, we're doing our thing now. We're, we're, we're taking the power back to the creators, I think. We're not really letting the big mainstream companies do everything that, that they benefit from us, you know? Not um, ever again. Not again. No, I don't I don't like it that much. I don't mind doing a bit of work for DC every so often, but not much, you know? Um, but generally, I like doing my stuff, and so my company does us. Get, <laughs> Carrie Ann, have you sold the Fairy yeah. Quest? But you're about to. About to, yeah. Um, I, I love FairyCon. FairyCon is my heart. That's Those are my people, right? Like, I'm not a big... I haven't been a big um, con goer, but Fairy Con is like those are my people. And what uh, is Fairy Con? And where is it? Uh, Fairy Con is in Baltimore. It's in Maryland. Um, sure. I've been to Baltimore. It's in Maryland. It's usually in November. Um, Maybe PJ James will take a drive down to Fairy Con. And they do Fairy Con in in November, and then in August they do Fairy Worlds, which is basically Coachella for fairies outside and or outside in Oregon. Um, but do you go to that too? I, I have been to that one. I've been to that one one time. Um, I go. I usually go to Fairy Con every year because it's on the East Coast. It's easier to get to all that. Um, but this year, Fairy Worlds is doing an, an online thing where they have musicians from all over the world that are going to live stream. It's going to be amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I uh, I should have some passion fruit to wake up. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, yeah, I love Fairy Con, and I, and I imagine we will have Fairy Quest at Fairy Con. Why not? The reason that Carrie Ann was yawning is because you got two middle-aged dudes talking about comic books, you know. I she's know. like, stop yeah. it. Well, we can talk about another good another good drink show. Uh, if you uh, ever get, if Mitch Halleck, I don't know if you know Mitch Halleck from Terrific Con at Mohegan Sun. I've you, never been there. I've never you been to that night one. Perfect with you too. If you yeah, I've a, never been to that one. You should get because it's such a great. I'm looking forward to going to more cons. Like I keep hearing all these things. Oh, Heron, Heron, yeah, Heroinburg. I can't say your name. Um, I love, um, I love Fawn. Fawn Oliver um, Tier heads up Fawn, and they're amazing. They just, I'm gonna plug them, even though they didn't ask me to. They just released a new single called Tamlin, and it's, uh, it's amazing. It's in German. Um, <laughs> but it's amazing, and it's I, I love them so so much. Their music, their music is magical. So if you love like medieval folk fairy music, go look up Fawn. But they're also kind of rocking too. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. I, I had a friend Fawn Leibowitz <laughs> that was um, that died in a kill explosion. Believe oh, it or not. Wow. 
I don't know if you have oh, a really? her von Leibowitz from Animal House. You guys never heard? All right. No. Oh yes. What? I think he's making a joke. I don't know what's happening. It's it's all right. It's it's. It's, Kevin, it's is asking, Kevin is asking an, an important question here. Kevin yes. is asking, is it fairy, F-A-I-R-Y, or fairy, F-A-E-R-I-E? -E. I prefer the older spelling of it, so that's why I spell it the way that I spell it. There you go. <laughs> fairy. Fawn. So does Fawn make a, um, here's Fairy Con, does Fawn make music like about woodland creatures and stuff they like do. that? They do. Yeah, their music is really pretty incredible. Um like find a video dream esque it's no it's um it's more like you know hurdy gurdies and and celtic and, music. it's like celtic music oh kind of, i mean can i if i play a youtube video what will happen you, you can you can share it and share the audio otherwise we won't hear it yeah yeah well, but i don't know if i could play that oh that's you right because then we'll get a strike then copyrights then copyrights will go no yeah. you can't do that yeah but well, what if i play it and it's some, bells here, some bells um, can I put, can I play it? Can I play a no, video? No, you can't because then it goes on Billy's stream and then yeah, they, they 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 so weird. that is very weird. So I, I just want to, I want to go back. Builders, right. Say what? Yeah, they're, they're well, like really cool. so yeah. are larger than others. Yes. Okay. What'd you, what'd you, oh, Tinkerbell's, it's Tinkerbell's bells. They get different sizes. So they have different oh, sounds. There you go. Uh, so I was going to say that uh, in order to sell Dragon Con, this is all I need to tell. I tell my my favorite convention experience of all time is at two o'clock in the morning with a bunch of drunken Klingons listening to Klingon karaoke. Oh, God. <laughs> That's horrible. It was, it was great. The guy was so plowed. He was so drunk. And he oh. came up. He asked me if I would join in, and I went, yeah, it'd be great. And I went with them, and it is the great – they sing songs in karaoke, but they sing them all in Klingon language because they've all learned it. And oh it is – that guy was so drunk, and he was singing, I touch myself. I oh, no. In Klingon. No. Oh, in Klingon. God, get yeah. out of town. No. No, thank you. Oh, come on. It was, <laughs> yes, yes, please. It was great. I never laughed so hard. As oh, watching a bunch of drunken Klingons singing songs yeah, in Klingon. Oh, it was brilliant. TJ, yeah. I don't understand your comment. <laughs> TJ says, I wonder if Fawn, if you hear Oliver say Fawn, Fawn, he says it. It's adorable the way Oliver says Fawn. He says, I wonder if Fawn's friends could find us some dates. Thank you, TJ. Um, <laughs> and could you bring some dates for our friends? Do you That's mean, all like, from Animal House. It's from Animal House. I was yeah. like, I don't understand. Okay. You don't even know what a. Oh. I've never seen Animal House. Fawn is pronounced Fawn. Yeah, we they when when Oliver pronounces it, he's, it sounds like Fawn. Um, yeah, no, no, they're they're amazing though. They're they're really sweet and wonderful and talented, and they're um, go buy their single Tamlin because it's helping support them during the pandemic. There you go. Named after Amber Tamlin. No, Tamlin, not Tamblin. Oh, Tamblin, yeah. like Tamblin, Tamblin, Alabama? Tamlin, like the like the man who went and, who got um, seduced by the fairy by a fairy queen and taken into fairy for a while. Oh no! Yeah, it's a, there's a whole There's a whole. If you My know. wife loves fairies. She knows all, our whole kitchen is all fairies. There's like oh. hundreds of them there. Hundreds. Good. Perfect. I approve of your kitchen. And I get and I get her little e like I got her ears and the wings, but the ears that are like it's like jewelry, like remember the jewelry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, oh my god. The prosthetic ears, and then I once I put them on, I leave them on for the whole week, and I sleep in them. I don't ever take them off until like I sometimes until I get off the plane. Do people ever think you're a Klingon? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 not a Klingon. Uh, what's Spock? I have no idea. Oh, is it Vulcan? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what is? That? I don't even know what that is. The 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 oh yeah, Vulcan. I remember my. The, this is a weird memory. <laughs> when I was a kid, I told my mom that my grandmother had Mr. Spock ears because my grandmother had pointed um, pointed ears. But it's because we're fairy people. That's that why. Terrible. How are we doing? How are we doing with the cover, Bill? Looking amazing, man. Really good. I can show you. Hang on, if yeah. you don't mind. Let's see it. I'm gonna have I'll to get have a to it during the stream because I don't want to rush it, but I'll finish it tonight. I'll have yep. it to you first thing in the morning. Beautiful. 
let's uh, let's go big with the with the with the can, if that's okay. Look there she out. is. So she's coming out nice. She's on eleven by seventeen. Yeah. Give it a second. Give it give it a second to adjust. I got the shadow of the camera in the way too, but yeah. Let's see if I get rid of that one. That might work a little better. Oh no! Yeah, she's coming along. Yeah. I she keeps. She, oh, I gotta yeah. I gotta do a lot of rendering. No, I love her. She's so, gorgeous, man. She's gorgeous. Look at that. Isn't that great? She'll she'll work out. She'll. I think. Uh, hopefully, people will like it. Yeah. And it's an honor to be a part of this with you guys. To be a part of Team Fairy. Yeah. Yeah, man. And you know what? Like, I I can't wait. Yeah, like right now it's my time. I'm trying to get through my Kickstarter and we're trying to get meta through our Kickstarter, right? And so what's really cool about it, Bill, is that, you know, you got friends helping you and, and helping you do yours, but, you know, we're right there. Like anytime someone comes to me for help, it's, yeah, I'm right. Sure. I'm happy to help, right? And so it's nice to be on the other end of it at the moment, you know, and say, hey, could anybody help me? And I, I asked a few people and I kid you not, dude, Everyone said yes. There wasn't a single person that didn't say yes. You know? That's awesome. Well, you know, you know what's kind of cool for me is that the more I've been drawing since I've I've been drawing so much again, um, you know, with the she books. And yeah. I, this morning, I mean, this weekend I did one commission, almost finished another, and a bunch of pages. So, like I said, for the she returned the she hike year, right? well, she returned the warrior is is being fulfilled. You know, we're, we're built, we're putting together the next book, She Haikyo, which means the ruins in Japanese. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah. um, you know, I, but I'm faster. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, like my speed is really picked up because the more you draw, let's see if I can get this angle. It drives me nuts looking at the angle is off. The more, the more you draw, the faster you get. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And I'll do yeah. it tomorrow. I'm going to do another page and I'll do another commission. And uh, just keep going from there. Yeah, man, it's great. Oh, like, I'm, I'm the same way, right? With, with, I've been doing a little bit more music lately. I have no time to do it, uh, but I try to spend a little bit of time at like five o'clock in the morning, getting a bit of music down. And, and the more you play, you know, the better you always are. Even if you're just, even if you know how to do it, you just keep, you have to keep practicing, man. And then it just, it. When I watch you, like, as you do it, you know. Let me, in your opinion, how much of that is is honestly is talent, and how much of that is work? Oh, I don't know. I uh, this is a far greater talent than people than me. So I think it's just work. I think I just I think I love it. You know, I think yeah. that's what, what what I especially when you, the things you love to do to draw because I've done some stuff, some books that yeah. I've worked on. You know that like if I didn't write it too, and I'm like, oh, and then well, I. There and, are some people that, it's, it's very laborious, you know? Right, but there are some people that can't um, put their hand in the place that you can. Like, when I watch you being really meticulous with the way that you bring the pen across the page, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm sure that we could I'm, – I'm, I feel like I'm a person that can learn an awful lot of things, right? So I, I feel like I could learn elements of it. But there's parts of it that I just look at the way that your hand moves and the way that you pull the – and I'm like – Man, you know, I, I I don't know how to do that. But at the same token, you know, there are times when I'm playing music. I mean, so much of that is work. So you're recording music or something, and you have to listen to a track 17 times, and it's really laborious, and you're putting a piece here and a piece there and taking stuff out. It's partly talent, and it's partly – it's mostly hard work, I think, you know? Yeah, and, and doing it over like that. Well, that's why I like to do the roughs, you know? And if you could see here, the rough is underneath it. Yeah. Give it a second. It, it's got to adjust. So, you know, there's a there's a whole other drawing underneath it. Yeah. And you really work out a lot. Like when we were talking, if you see here, here was the first knee I did. I actually yeah. made this leg was not straight down. I had this, if you could see it with the red, yeah. this yeah. leg was up here. And then this was a straight long one. I'm like, oh, I think it might work better. And I finally figured out, yeah, this one looks better if I do it like that. Let me, let me yeah. get it off of me. Sorry. Have you guys? It's, it's great though, man, because watching someone else's process, right? It doesn't matter what kind of creativity it is. It could be music. It could be, uh, I do it with writing, right? Like I love to do like, um, like writing seminars and just, you know, we turn people on to the, to ideas that my feeling is that they already know these things, but they don't know that they know them. So I just kind of remind them of things that they probably know. Mm -hmm. and, and it, 
it speaks to people really quickly. They're like, yeah, I love that man. Like it, I learned more writing with you in, in an hour than I thought think I learned in college. And the answer is not true. It's, I just reminded you of the things that you learned in college. That's all. But we yeah, did it. And, and, and it, like what we're doing here too, is such a great way to make a living. It yeah. really is. Even though people don't think we actually work <laughs> you know, yeah. you get that one. Well, you don't work. You know what? <laughs> you know, you're like, you're what? Not a creative yeah. person that, because like, you know, I'm an actor, but I write too and do things that you know people would be like, oh, you just like hang out and watch TV all day, right? I'm like, no, you know. But I feel like what people don't understand sometimes is that it's a lifestyle. It's not like you show up and go to a job and then you come home and you leave that job wherever it was that you found it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know. It's a lifestyle. It's like if I'm awake, my brain is going on something creative all the time. The yeah, one, the one thing, thing, good, Paul. Sorry. I was going to say the one thing that I tried to explain to people, like, like they might read a screenplay that I wrote and and go, yeah, that's that's cool. And I think that people look at uh, like talent and they think that talent is that I'm sitting around and I'm watching TV and my hands are typing <laughs> down here, right? So I'm just, I'm not actually doing any work. My talent took over and now I'm writing a screenplay and I'm just busy like playing video games. Wouldn't that and, be nice? And it writes itself, right? And and what I don't realize is the bit, you know, the, the 17 days in a row that I worked until five o'clock in the morning to get that screenplay done Right. Or the amount of meticulous work that you do on a page like this page that you're doing right now, how long it takes to do. And even though you like doing it, um, it's really nice. Like when you're acting, Carrie, and when you're on camera, right, it's great when you're actually in the studio on camera and everything's great. But there's so much more that goes into there's all the oh, training God, yeah. and the reading and the learning of lines and the <laughs> pick one. You know, yeah, there's so much. Why? Well, that's what you know. I mean, I'm an um, for those of you who don't know. I'm also an acting coach and that's what I tell people all the time is that, you know, it's like when, when I'm teaching a class or coaching someone, it's like, if this isn't like you show up and do this for an hour, you know, you should be doing something every day towards your desired artistic, you know, career. Yeah. But I also feel like too, just as a creative person, I know that if I've got something like right now I'm finishing, um, finishing up writing a draft of a pilot with my production partner and every second, not every second, but a lot of the seconds, my brain is like, tick, 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 tick. I need to write that scene. I need to do this. I need to do that. So even if I'm trying to sit down and watch an episode of TV or something like that, sometimes I can't because it won't leave me alone and I have to go write it down, you know? I don't I don't watch TV. I don't. I rarely see movies. I, I have to I, watch I, TV. I, Outlander is on TV. I, I never watch TV. <laughs> Outlander is uh, junkie. I don't, I don't see it because right? I'm too busy making things. And so I just can't do it. I can't, I can't listen to bands when I'm, when I'm doing music because I just start listening to the baseline and the lyrics and stuff. So I listen to like space music. And if I'm writing, if I'm writing, if I'm writing, I have to, if I listen to something, it has to be like space music or it has to be music that's almost like a soundtrack that's in the same world as what I'm writing. But if it has lyrics, I'm going to listen to the lyrics and go off into Wonderland somewhere else and get yeah. distracted. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty difficult, right? But it's, it's kind of cool. Like I love doing, I love doing my job, but it's, it's piece after piece after piece. And so th they get to that point that it's worth it. It's an anecdote that's always worth telling. I think it was Picasso and someone sort of came up to him and badgered him for a, for a sketch. And he kind of did the sketch and then gave it to them and said, okay, that'll be like five grand or whatever. And they said, what, for 10 minutes? And he's like, yeah, it took me 10 minutes to, to draw it. It took me a lifetime to learn how to draw it. Give me, a, you know, and he's yeah, right, yeah. right? Like all the hours that people don't see in what we do, we work really hard, right? Like creative yeah. people work really hard. And that's why I don't really get a lot out of um, people sort of saying, well, I, I want to take my, why are we giving money to the arts and all that? And I'm like, well, how do you feel about that in the pandemic right now? Like, we're, yeah, we're, I Oh, I love that meme. That, that's been going around where it says exactly that where it's like so you thought the arts weren't important what have you been doing during quarantine <laughs> yeah yeah it's you know well i mean i as you know like i my my social media is now an island of positivity like i, I don't talk about i never talk about politics i never talk about people being angry at each other i don't do it i just post pictures of my cat or everybody else's animals and stupid things that I found on the internet and stuff like that. Cause why not? Right. But you know, I feel like what we put out there is like, Oh look, there you go. There's our stretch goals right there. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, stretch uh, goals. 
Yeah, we're getting to the 40 grand. We're going to do a 45 as well, actually. Once we get 40, we'll announce. And uh, it's so cool think, looking, though. Just even yeah, that. If you go down, it's actually, cool. look at our risks one. We did a really funny risks thing. Look. Oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't read that finally. There's like, us. Funny. Jill, was it? Our risks yeah, exactly. is great. Right. All right. So, what do I do? Like, click on this or just go? No, no, no. We did our own one. So, basically, we just said, like, Everyone has like little risk goblins, right? There's all these goblins that get in our way. So you see, like we put this little goblin on it, and and then we said, here are the risks, and it was COVID, shipping, delays in the way the art was done. Then it was murder hornets and nuclear war, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> we covered our bases, and we basically said, in the event of murder hornets, honestly, to be fair, you're on your own. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's other, yeah, we can't help you with that. Yeah, we can't help you with murder hornets. We'll do our best, but we're, we're you know. So um, I don't know. Our page is kind of fun. And well, hey, Paul, hey, yeah. Paul, what about putting up, making my, you have the, you have my rough, right? Yeah. Why do you put the rough up? I'm going to put it up. Yeah, I'm going to put it up. Um, you know, even, I, I don't know. Even while we're, we're live, I could say. I'm gonna go live. Okay, yeah. you guys talk amongst yourself. I'm going to go put the rough up. Let's do a category. We'll do the rough with what? All three books. What do you think I should put it up for, Bill? I don't know, man. I'm just, I don't know. I mean, usually for, for like that kind of art, maybe $300 for that $300 art. Plus I mean, it's 11 by 17. It's a really nice piece of art. Yeah, 11 by 17. So we're going to have to say $300. And maybe they get a book? Yeah, you're going to get a book cover, as well. Yeah. Cover or something is, you know? Yeah, we'll get a copy of the cover, right? So you get that book and the artwork for, for like uh, three fifty or something. I don't, three hundred and fifty, and then we'll take care of the shipping. So hopefully they'll buy it. Does that mean stand by? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ever, ever relevant question. Does that mean they can have a book? Go on. Does that mean that they just to clarify for people and for me? Like if they, if you say, okay, it's $350, you get that cover, like the artwork plus the book. Do they also get all the reward levels beneath that? You know, do they get then issues one, two, and three? Like how does that, how are you? No, no, no. We just have to put this one as its own thing. It's like literally one thing. Yeah. You Because know? I, I wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. It gets too crazy, man. You yeah, just yeah. like. Yeah, you can't give away everything. Yeah, yeah. But I also got in trouble for it. Like, yeah, you get that. And like people are like, what are you, nuts? I know. Yeah, I yes, there should be there should be a a Pop XP Power Pets with uh, Rune and Celeste as my dog, and then Claudius and Billy's cat and Una. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have, we actually have two cats. But, um, we have Surrey, the nice Sophie, the nice one, and then we have the Wicked Witch of the West, which is Surrey, which all she cares about is food. <laughs> they're both rescues so um sorry even though she's got to weigh 20 pounds she's a big giant fatty and she's just she's got this food i don't know what i mean i don't know if she's been emotionally scarred to be afraid that she's going to starve or something Itty. but she will literally know. eat food out of your hand well i am um nuts well poor little celeste has been not feeling great today so if i have to leave to take her out again that's oh good. no yeah she's just i don't know what's going on i don't know if she ate something funky or what but she's been like having a, she's had a, a upset tummy all day so i'm gonna have to it's it's depending on how long we go i might have to bail so i can call the vet and see if no we'll get going soon we're over two hours anyway yeah. and i want to finish this and i'm supposed to go to my uh <laughs> in law's house tonight so i want to finish this tonight if i don't finish it tonight paul i'll, I'll have it done first thing in the morning yeah man i'm writing up our campaign right now i'm doing 350 dollars. we'll take care of shipping um we will we'll do shipping try not to be in try not to be in zimbabwe whoever it is that yeah it could be, you know, i just say free domestic shipping free domestic shipping yeah free domestic shipping we'll work out the rest yeah okay here we are giving us one by the one and only Billy Tucci. One and only, wow. Yeah, the one and only, man. You know that. Uh, all right, well, we're closing then on the end of our stream, so stand oh by, God. everybody. All right, here she is. <laughs> there she is. There's, there's Celeste. I'm going to give – I'm going to put this up in a minute, so if anybody's watching Billy actually do this this cover, we're doing the cover rough. It's going to be $350. We're going to put the, the rough Billy's book – and we are going to ship it domestically anywhere. We'll take care of that 
350. Look so at that amazing thing. You know you want it. Awesome. And then I'll share it when we're, when we're done. I'll, I'll share it on social media and stuff too. Absolutely. Do I have a good quality? Did you send me a good quality one of the actual rice? I should yeah? send you one that's I've good. Got one. I've got one, yeah. I've got one. Yeah, okay. for, the, for, the, for, for online, it should be good. Yeah, I got one for online. Okay, good. So I'm going to put that up. So it's going to go up on our Kickstarter in a little bit. If any of you people covet it, I bet getting it pretty quickly because I imagine it will go at some point. So uh, stand by. And here you go. All right. All right. So let's see if, if I refresh it, if it pops up. No, I didn't. It didn't go up yet. I'm just trying to like solve a problem with it. Actually, it's being a bit funky on me. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, let me know when it goes up. Yep. Hang on a minute. Stand by. And we'll 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 remove the stream for now, and we'll show some ad. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Okay. So, Carrie Ann, when's your birthday? December fourth. December fourth. Yes. Are you a, what are you, a, a Sagittarius? Sagittarius, unless you're playing into the new astrology stuff, and then I'm an Ophiuchus. <laughs> but I was Tell them about it. Tell them about it. Hey, what the I, hell is that? I don't really know a whole lot. Sorry, I'm a Sagittarius. It was, it was, I'm a, so weird. I'm a Sagittarius. Um, it, the, according to NASA, they've added this other sign called Ophiuchus, right? And technically, that's what I am now. Paul's the same way. Paul, Paul your birthday is December 7th, right? Six. I'm December 6th, yeah. Six, right. Okay. Oh, so you know the reason why they did that? So they changed the dates of all the things? That's because somebody – there's, there's two types of zodiac signs. Right. There are Leos – and everyone else wishes they were. Oh, <laughs> so this is obviously created by some charlatan who would just missed out being a Leo. It's probably a Virgo or a Cancer and mm -hmm. want to be a Leo because, as I said, everyone knows. This sounds like jealousy. Leo or, or jealousy. the type of people in the world. Leos and those who wish they were Leos. And every Leo will tell you the same. I'm telling you. I know. I know. Oh, why don't you let him out? Oh. I know. Well, I just took her out, but her tummy's been funny, so I think that that's what's happening. Um, so I have, I, I might have to disappear in a second to take her out. Do you hear her? Yeah. I can hear that. I know. Okay. I think. I do. You have to go outside again. I'm sorry, puppy. Normally, normally she doesn't, but her tummy is bothering her. I don't know why. What did you eat? What did you eat, pumpkin? I don't know. And that's why we have them. You gotta take care of them. I know. How's Una doing, bud? She's still tripoding around. Yeah, she's doing great. Uh -huh. She's uh, she's our little tripod. I love to bring her up, but I'd have to carry her. She's really terrified of the stairs, obviously. Yeah. Because my yeah. student's on the third floor. But she's a big girl, right? She's big, she's right? Big, she must yeah, weigh how much? She's a big dog. She's she's well, she's probably eighty-five pounds now without a leg so <laughs> she's big. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> she was she's a big dog and but she's doing great she's doing really great she is the best she's our little uh, we don't deserve her yeah that's awesome so but we want to get her a puppy oh so she, really you think that'd be good you know, for her? yeah she gets go she gets bored because she's so active but there's not a lot she can do now you know she's got to take right. it easy it's only been a month since she had her surgery so it's She's still adjusting, you know, and getting used to it and all and learning what she can't do. You know, she won't try to go up the stairs and she fell down. She shouldn't be trying to go up and down stairs for a couple of months, actually. But right. even like our stairs, because our stairs are um, the main stairs are, are hard floors. You know, they're, they're hard floors. So you don't want her to go up on that. It's not carpeting. So, right. But she's doing great, guys. She really is. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that's good, man. Because, you know, it's like they break our hearts, right? Like, I love yeah. my animal. My my stupid cat is like my best mate. You know, he's like sits with me all the time and he's always there and he he's goofy as hell. He's the sweetest natured, stupid ass cat you've ever known. <laughs> he's so funny, but he, <laughs> my guy, right? Like he's, he's, he's definitely all me because he's not bright, you know, <laughs> don't have it going on. But he, he, he likes – my favorite thing about him is he's, he's like, really pleasant, right? And um, he really likes to bring in animals, but he doesn't kill them because he just wants someone to play with. I kid you not. I know it sounds stupid. He kills cicadas. He loves them because he crunches them up, and then he throws oh, them. Yeah. 
Because there's loads but of them. If he caught a chipmunk, he wouldn't kill it? No, he had one today. He, he caught one today and then he chased it around. He kind of, the thing was terrified and he just walked right. around the house looking for it, playing with it. All right. So how did you get, to, where's the chipmunk now? I took it. I, 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 I've got a system with him because he's so stupid. He brings in like one every two or three days. <laughs> he chases him underneath the sofa. And when he gets him underneath the sofa, I open the back door and I make a cardboard box like shoot and it can't go anywhere else. And I lift the sofa up and it runs out the back door. Right. <laughs> So today I took him out of the room and he knows what the score is. I took him out of the room and I'm like, you're not doing it again. And I made the shoot and I opened the back door and I let the chipmunk go flying out. And, um, and he was, he went out to the backyard through the dog door and he was waiting for the chipmunk. He knew it was coming. And so the chipmunk comes flying out and he catches it again. <laughs> and he brought him back inside. And I'm like, Claudia, stop it. <laughs> so That's funny. That chipmunk is that sounds pretty smart, though. Chipmunk, oh no, he was literally waiting in the backyard for the thing to come out, right? What he, did, what he did was he he jumped. The first thing he did was he jumped over it. He missed it at first, right? So it got away. I, I think it was the same one. It got away and it got into a little tube, right? And I'm like, I oh, he didn't have it. He couldn't get it. And about an hour later, he walks in with his chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dude, is that the same chipmunk? So he just he's just and I'm. I had to go send it out. So he's uh, he's in trouble right now because he's stupid. Oh, poor baby. No. Well, is All it? Right. Is I, the saved a, I saved the reward. We're up. Yay. Let's jump in on that. All right, guys. So here we are. We've got nine days left. You're, you're at 37,518. And if we scroll through here, let's see. Go down to the bottom, I would think, because it's down at three fifty. You should make it since it's a high tick. It's new. Can you make it a uh, uh, featured item? Is yeah, I'm going to right now. Yeah, I was just, I was just thinking of that. Like, uh, we're gonna do. You can't really do a featured item. I can put it in the story though. I can go right to the story and like add oh, it right okay. top. Yeah, because on um, yeah. what's we call yeah. it? You can. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the um, sorry, the Indiegogo. You can do a featured item too. Yeah, we can't do it. Oh, tired. Let's see. And I'll share it for sure. Let's see. I don't know. Oh, maybe I have to refresh. Yeah, hang on a second. Just added Billy Tucci cover off one time only. Uh, and then here's what I will do. I will add in a picture right here. And we will throw that right at the top of the page. Let me just get. Yeah, make sure it says original art so they know it's original art. Yes, I will do that. Hang on a second. Um, let's see. Fablewood, Fairy Quest. I'm looking, to, you know, it takes forever, man. Like, I got so many projects. There it is. Yeah, original Tinkerbell cover artwork. Yeah, I'm going there. I'm going there. Here we go. It's, it's, there you go. So it's only $350, and you get a book. And you get the original original art, a full figure original art, which is like my full figure commissions. Right. You can't beat there that. You you get a published cover. Okay, so I uploaded that, and then the last one. Where is it? One well, we'll share it. And we'll it. Original artwork. Okay. All right. So we now have, if I'm not mistaken, if you refresh. Again, and we save. You will find it in there. Yep, it's in there. So if you get refresh again, you ought to be able to find it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, let's do it. Let's. Uh, you want me to refresh it again? Is that what you said? Yeah, because so, yeah, it should be at the top of the page now. Okay. There you go. Just added. Here comes something. Billy Tucci cover off one time only to own this original artwork. There it is. Look, we put it right at the top. Brilliant. Awesome. All right. So it's there. One person gets oh, there it. it. There it is. Well, that's and nice. How much fun that is. Look at that. And you guys can have that cover. It's not yeah. number three. It's a cover to number two, though. So I have to fix I'll I'll fix that. But there it is. So if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, again, we're, we're coming on almost two and a half hours. Poor Carrie Ann's dog is wondering, like, Mommy, I just want to go outside. <laughs> uh, guys, this has been great, Paul. 
um anytime you want to come on all right man you know i'm on i'm on anytime that you want me and i really appreciate your friendship my mate you know like oh, you anytime I, i'm a bit worried i gotta be honest i'm a bit worried because carrie ann took her animal out now you're doing your thing i gotta walk out in the other room right now and find out what claudius has brought in for me because i know <laughs> he's got something in there like i heard him running a minute ago <laughs> That's great. Well, listen, you guys are awesome. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, Paul, I will talk to you tomorrow for sure. Yeah. Right. Um, I really want to pop on tomorrow on Pop XP. And I don't know, Paul, you should come in on this too. Bring me in. Uh, yeah. We've got Bo Smith. Oh, Bo. Well, we missed him the other day, man. Yep, yeah. Yep. And Dan Fraga talking Todd McFarland. They both work for Todd. So did I. So did you. Yep. Um, and we're going to be talking to Todd father because of the new, uh, sci-fi channel documentary that came out. That's funny. So they're we're doing talking the Todd, some Todd McFarlane stories. That's funny. I got some funny Todd McFarlane stories as well. So I think we'll do that. And then of course we'll hawk fairy quest and we'll just talk some good stuff, man. And, right. and uh, Dan's a great guy. He lives um, right near me. I think I, yeah, you guys got to hook up. He's around the corner oh. from me. Yeah. He'll, you know what? He'll talk. You, you should get together with him for a cup of coffee or something and talk. Yeah. And and he'll give you all the scoop on Indiegogo, man. Yeah, man, I will. I'll give him a shout. I'll give him a shout. Right, I think yeah, he's we'll right. set that up tomorrow. I'll send you the, the link. Because right. um, Niall, I think, did all the promos and everything a few weeks ago and all. But uh, come on in and join us. That'll be fun. All right. Well, listen, thanks, everybody, for joining us. And thank you uh, to our team, Fairy, as always, Carrie Ann. Wow. <laughs> thanks for having me. It's always fun to come play. Yep. And uh, guys, uh, this cover will be done tomorrow. Let me just make my cover a little bit bigger for now. Wait, let me just remove this for now. Uh, the, 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 this, the, this cover, the, the, the actual cover will be up tomorrow. Um, and, uh, she's coming along nicely. She'll be beautiful. I promise you, Paul, she'll be beautiful. She's when beautiful, I'm done. She's beautiful um, already. It's amazing, I, man. I'm so my excited. In, in a little while, but, um, thank you everybody for joining us. Come back again tomorrow. Um, we got Bo Smith, Fragaboon, and hope, hopefully Paul Jenkins will pop in for a little bit. And, uh, Carrie Ann, you're wonderful. Paul, you're amazing. Guys, everyone back Fairy Quest, please. It's live right now on Kickstarter. He's got nine days left. Get that cover. Help him out. It's a nice cover. It's yeah. a, and it's the rough. So there you go. Oh, oh, ear. oh, the cover will have the ear, and this one won't, I don't think. Hmm. I'll have to see if I can get that ear. I completely forgot the ear. <gasps> How could ear. you? Billy. I know. How can I do a fairy without a pointed ear? I'm not going to work on that. I was having too much fun on this stream. That's why. <laughs> All right, guys. Everyone have a great day. There we go. So I can draw that little ear in there. She'll come in. Oh. Um, And I'll see. I'll fix. I'll get her ear in. We'll get that ear in there. See, I sort of drawing it over yeah. here. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's right there. We'll get it in. She'll have her ear. Don't don't worry. And uh, all right, guys. Thank you, everyone. Please back fairy quest. Nope. I didn't want to remove that. And Kevin, up. Kevin, write to us. We'll get you your books. Don't worry. We'll find a way to get you some fairy quest. Okay. All right. Everyone have a great day. Um, and uh, thank you all. Remember back fairy quest. Here it is. Go to Kickstarter. You know, just do fairy quest number three Kickstarter or the description is in the link. Please like our page. Give our guests a like smash the like button, if you will. And uh, if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing to the pop XP, um, if I may do a little bit of pitching myself real quick, guys. I'm so happy to say for all of you that ordered the She Sideblade, and thank you so much for a Comic Con at home. The books are all in. So they're all here. All Here's right. your comics. They came in, they look gorgeous. So uh, the little San Diego Comic Con logo. One person, though, will get in the mystery pack. Where's our. One person will get the prototype that was in the mystery pack, which you can tell it's a prototype. Because it does not have the San Diego Comic Con edition stamp. So, right. if you want to get the mystery pack, that's on She Return of the Warrior. We're now like $60 shy of $116,000 on Indiegogo. And um, boom. All right, guys, I'm going to finish this cover. I love you guys. Carrie Ann, I've just met you a few times on the interwebs, and I love you already. Oh, thanks. I love you too. So you guys have fun, Paul. Great luck with it. You guys are going to smash that 40G. You got a big announcement coming up with um, – oh, you got another You got another backer. Great. Thank you, guys. You just backed. Uh, you got some big announcements coming up this week, right, Paul? 
Yep. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff. We got all of the all of the uh, the Jennifer Meyer print. We've got the the free stuff that we're giving away. We got the audio drama. We've got um, the metallic uh, bookmarks. All of this kind of free swag that we're giving away. Plus, we could probably. I'll try to work out the trading card thing. I've got to work it out. If I can do it, we're going up for the last week, and I think people will dig it. You know. Absolutely. Well, right. whenever you want to come on, you're on. Thanks, so, brother. Uh, thank you, guys. Everyone, have a great day. Again, two and a half hours we're on, and um, you guys rock. So thank you all. Check out Fairy Quest. Guys, give me a second. I'm going to play our little banner. And uh, you guys will have a great day, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow, all right? Thanks, brother. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one. Let's see. Here it is. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP.